Hello everyone, second time, second time we're doing this stream. Hopefully it's actually working this time. Um, not quite sure what was going on the first time with the audio issues, but um, Steve says at least last time that the audio is fine. So I'm going to take his word for it and uh, let us know in the comments if the audio still isn't fine because that would be a bit crap, but hopefully this first time, the second time will be the golden time. So thanks everyone for joining us. Thank you to those who are also listening to this stream or watching the replay of it later once it's uh, sort of finished. Um, and you might be wondering um, what is going on? Well, firstly, we were supposed to start half an hour ago. So thanks to those who are waiting around. Um, what we're actually gonna be doing today is building an Intel test system uh, on this live stream. So the thing that we were sort of doing a couple of weeks ago on the channels, I built an AMD Ryzen test system. It was the Ryzen 5 2600X slash Ryzen 7 2700X. A couple of cool Corsair stuff, some cool Gigabyte stuff went into that build. And obviously what I also need at the same time, not just an AMD system, but also having an Intel system. So we've partnered with Gigabyte, we've partnered with Intel, and we've partnered with the wonderful people at PC Kaysky to do some uh, building, PC building. And um, people in the chat are sounding, saying the sound sounds good. So yes, that's some nice stuff. So all right, um, you might've seen some logos in the corner. That's because this video has been brought to us in major partner with Gigabyte, who's on the other side there. And the main thing that we'll be showing off in this video and the main sort of centerpiece of the build that we've got here is the new Z370 Aorus Ultra Gaming Wi-Fi board. Uh, and this is a particularly interesting board because this particular one comes with integrated Intel Optane memory. You get 32 gig built in to the um, one of the M.2 slots or whatever the slot is that it uses. Um, I we, We've seen a fair few bits and pieces on Optane before and sort of the ability for it to accelerate your, um, if you're on mainly hard drive storage, you can use Optane to sort of accelerate loading times and that sort of thing. And, you know, Gigabyte approaches and like, do you want to check this out? I'm like, you know, sure, why not? We haven't done a lot of stuff with Optane before. It'd be interesting to see whether some of the performance claims that Intel uh, says about Optane turn out to be true. Um, we've seen some things about how it, you know, speeds up loading time. So we'll see how that goes. We're not actually going to be testing it today, but we're just using the latest and greatest motherboard. There is a version of this motherboard that does not have Optane memory with it, if you're interested in buying it without that. But Optane is also a feature um, if you want it. Um, the other cool thing that we have, of course, we've got all the components down here. We're using the Gigabyte GeForce GTX 1070 Ti. Again, this will be familiar to you if you saw our live stream. Well, not our live stream, but our original video on the AMD test system. We originally used this. I swapped it out for Vega 64 to do some FreeSync 2 testing. Freed up this card. I thought, you know, why not? Got it available. I'll use it. We also have here, of course, Core i7-8700K. Wouldn't be an Intel test system if we weren't using, uh, I guess, their flagship CPU for now. Hopefully, we'll be able to overclock that up to around, you know, that 5 gigahertz plus mark at, um, at some point. So, yeah, um, hopefully so far, everything's been going fine. Those are the main components that we will be using. Big thanks to Gigabyte and Intel for providing those and helping us out with the stream. And, oh, look at this. We have also got this second camera here so we can show off some more stuff in a bit more detail using testing out some IP camera stuff here with this second stream so um, interesting to have I guess uh, two camera angles going on at the moment um, okay so we also have a bunch of other stuff the guys at PC case gear helped us out to provide all the other components that we're using for this build and we really want to thank them for that because, you know, it's difficult sometimes to get these parts, but they're really pulled through with us. Definitely check them out if you're in Australia. They are our favorite retailer, PCCaseGear.com. So we've got a whole bunch of other stuff. So people were asking earlier in the chat about um, Team T-Force or Team Force or whatever their brand name is called. T-Force is on the packaging. I think it's Team Group. We have got some components from them to show off. Um, and you can see on our low FPS camera, as people are talking about here, that we do have some Team T-Force Nighthawk RGB RAM. We've got 32 gig DDR4-3000 in this particular kit. It's got a really strange design, I reckon, in terms of its sort of weird angular sort of thing. We'll see how that RGB looks in the particular build, but that's what we're currently using at the moment. And we've also got their SSD on our super low FPS camera here. Um, which is 256 gig SATA drive, nothing too fancy. We normally swap out our drives in our test systems with, um, 
yes, yeah, so we normally swap out these drives in our test systems with the drives that we use across all of our you know, testing and that sort of thing. So for a boot drive, it doesn't matter too much. Um, but we have got that stuff from T4, so big thanks to them for sending that stuff out. Uh, for the power supply, we have Be Quiet Straight Power 11. Now this PSU is, uh, oh yeah, the, the solid state drive is RGB, I think. It definitely has some AuraSync features and stuff on it. So the person that was, uh, yeah, commenting about that is definitely an RGB SST. So look, I don't know. It sounds like an interesting product. The Be Quiet Straight Power 11. This product is so new that if you check it out on Amazon, it doesn't even have a picture yet on the page. So definitely a very new product from them. 80 plus gold, 650 watt, pretty much the standard stuff that you'd ask for in sort of a test system thing. Full cable management. Um, so we'll be checking this beast out in the stream and sort of seeing how that goes with the rest of our testing. We also have for cooling another piece of gear from Be Quiet. We have their Silent Loop 280. So this is their 280 millimeter radiator, closed loop liquid cooler, of course. This will be cooling at 8700K. And of course, thanks to the guys in, uh, from PC Case Gear for sending all of this out. But it doesn't stop there because we have even more stuff. We have Fantex have sent out a bunch of RGB stuff. We have their RGB strip in black, but also RGB, but it's just black, the base color. Um, we've got that there. We've got their digital RGB controller that we'll be plugging it all into. And we also have three um, fan sort of shrouds. So these are really interesting. They're digital RGB frames that you sort of put around your non-RGB fans to give them RGB if you really want RGB. So lots of RGB stuff in this build. The motherboard has tons of RGB, the memory, the SSD even, the fans, everything will be RGB at the moment. So someone asks here, hey, I have a question. What do you think about this RAM OC? So you've got CL10 1.65 volts at 2133 Corsair Vengeance as an XMP at 1600 megahertz. I will leave that one to Steve to answer because that will definitely be one of the questions that he is more familiar with that sort of thing, having done recently done that overclocking video on the channel. If you haven't test seen that, definitely go check that out as well. Um, okay, so, um, oh, and the final thing is we also have a Be Quiet Dark Base 700 down there. Uh, I'm not going to bring it out just yet because it is pretty big and will take up a lot of space, but that'll be the main, uh, well, of course, the main case. There's only one case in the PC build. Um, so that's the sort of thing that we're putting all of these components in. And yeah, so basically, if you're following the stream so far, the stream we're going to be going through pretty much the whole um, built so we're not really sure how long this will take um, could be a couple of hours so just join in for a bit of a ride and have a bit of fun there um, we'll be giving calling Steve uh, about halfway through giving him uh, chatting to him a little bit on Skype we'll be checking in with him I guess hopefully that works because we did test it yesterday and it worked but knowing our success doing this stream today uh, it probably won't work but hopefully we can get that up and running uh, in a couple of hours time Someone asks in the chat, Ko Kofasa asks, you should talk about how inaccurate game requirements are. Yes, I really agree about the game requirements thing. I think now we're starting to see a few more game developers say like, you know, games are, you know, 1080p ultra, um, you'll get, you need to use this hardware to get 1080p ultra, you'll need this hardware for 4K, 60 FPS and that sort of thing. I think that's hopefully where the industry is moving with regard to that sort of thing. But yeah, it definitely needs to be, some sort of standard or something so we can sort of say, you know, the recommended requirements give you that 1080p 60 or 1080p 120 or whatever people are targeting at the moment. Um, yeah, so I totally agree about the, the system requirements sort of thing. Let's put some of this stuff away and get into the actual building of the uh, uh, system because we need to clear out some space here. We need the 8700K, don't need the RGB stuff until um, a little bit from now, don't need that just yet, don't need this just yet. So some fun stuff. Uh, and yeah, I see Steve has joined in the chat there. He should hopefully, um, hopefully be able to respond to some of your questions as well. So if you have stuff for him specifically, he'll be checking out the chat as well. And while I'm sort of building, I'll check over here from time to time. Um, Chase says you should overclock your CPU to five gigahertz. Definitely, we're hoping to achieve five gigahertz with this particular sample. We were gonna see how this performed earlier when Steve did his, um, 
you know, he got a whole bunch of CPUs, I think it was 10 from PC case gear to sort of see how that was performing and sort of see, you know, what sort of differences you can get between the retail samples. But this one was actually provided by Intel as opposed to PC case gear. So if it's one of those golden review samples, we'll certainly find out um, after the stream when I start overclocking this system. Uh, greetings from Costa Rica. Oh, geez, it's uh, amazing to see where people uh, watch hardware and box them around the world. We really appreciate all the support around the globe. And apologies to the people who are in the time zones where this video is really terrible to watch. I think it's in Europe at the moment. This is beyond midnight. So sorry to you guys. We will be changing up a few of our live streams in the future so that people all around the world will be able to watch at sensible times. Um, Bob says, letting Tim take the heat. Yeah, that's definitely true. Um, Steve, he, yeah, didn't want to come out for this one. I think it was probably for the best because then both of us would be taking heat for that fail at the start of the video. Rusty says, is it correct to assume you're heading out to Computex, which is why you're not on stream? I assume that's for Steve. Yes, we're both heading out to Computex. We leave on Saturday evening, um, and that'll be a real blast. We hope to do a live stream there as well, and that should be really, really fun, I think. Gabriel asks, Steve, where are you? Why are you not in the video? We'll be chatting to him later in this particular video. We'll be heading, hitting, up, hitting him up on Skype. So I know how you guys love stuff that's in packages and the unpackaging sort of stuff. Um, all of this stuff, I haven't taken out of the box. I didn't pre-look at it on before, so it's all a bit of an interesting thing to see how this stuff is going. So this is the board that we've got here, the Z370 uh, Ultra Gaming, and you can see the integrated Optane stick that they've got here in the sort of center. We can use our low FPS camera for this, I reckon. Change this over here. So you can see there that the Intel Optane memory is uh, fixed into the center. You can remove it if that's something that you weren't after, but again, you should just buy the board that doesn't have Optane memory integrated into it. Um, yeah, fairly standard board. You know, it's got all your USB ports. It has USB Type-C, um, USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C and Type-A on this board. Um, plenty of the usual stuff that you'd expect from a gigabyte board and also lots of RGB as well. So certainly a very interesting board that we will be putting the CPU in. And of course, I think they have got just their usual stuff. We probably will need a SATA cable, so let's take that out. We'll need the IO shield as well. Um, I do quite like the Wi-Fi solution on there. I've been using the X470 board with their test system and using the 802.11 AC Wi-Fi that's integrated to these boards, and it works really well. So, um, you know, not quite at the level of Ethernet that we typically use, but certainly their Wi-Fi these days is getting to a point where it's actually at least somewhat usable. All right, let's, uh, now we're using proper um, PC building sort of uh, requirements in that we are not using any anti-static gear. So for all those people that say, yeah, you definitely need to use anti-static gear, you're probably right. But just for the moment, um, probably not something that we're doing at the moment. Okay, so I might need my trusty box cutter. Steve is meant to be getting me one of those cool knives, but it hasn't quite happened just yet. So handy box cutter is something that uh, we typically like to use over here. Factory sealed and everything. How about that? Brand new Core i7-8700K. Of course, for those of you who didn't join into the stream live, that's fine. Now, I have to ask you guys in the chat, all Intel CPUs and AMD CPUs come with these little stickers that you get in the back of the instruction manual. Do you guys attach this sticker to your system or do you just throw that away? I'm always curious to know what people do with that sort of thing. Uh, so let us know, do you put the sticker on your system when you're building? Okay, Core i7-8700K, let's use the low FPS camera. Here you go, brand new out of the box. And that's a really crappy camera that we've got there. So wonderful stuff going on there. Chase says, have you, uh, have you heard about 4K 144Hz monitors? Yes, um, hopefully we'll be able to test one of those soon. Um, 2000 US makes them probably not something that everyone will buy, but certainly something that um, some of you will be interested in is sort of that high-end monitor that will last you quite a while. So 
So yeah, it seems like some people are saying no, some people put it on their keyboard, some people attach it to their case, um, some people throw it away. Only 12 year old girls use stickers, that's a bit of a burn there from whoever said that. <laughs> I certainly don't put the uh, sticker on my systems, I like to keep the case nice and clean, but you go around to people's places that have got them and sometimes you see people put them. So, all right, let's put the uh, good old CPU in. Do the old line up the uh, triangle into the corner. Little plastic retention bit has popped off. CPU's in, looking all nice. We're already underway with actually doing some of the building and uh, on the second stream that has actually worked. So uh, thanks to all of you guys who loves, um, who are joining in on the stream. All right, let's put the RAM in as well. Team Force RAM. It's interesting, this brand, I hadn't heard of it um, before sort of earlier this year when we started doing some stuff with T-Force. Seems to be a really relatively new player in the sort of memory and uh, storage sort of division. So certainly an interesting thing to sort of see how this RAM goes, but they do offer a range of products actually. Um, you know, DDR4, 3000, 3200, they've got RGB kits, they've got non-RGB kits. So certainly something worth checking out. And they've got some really aggressive, um, really aggressive uh, design to this particular, um, these particular dims. It's like very angular. It's got the RGB sort of, um, I don't know what you call that, sort of a light bar. It goes through both the top and also the side. So I guess if you get some side vision of that, you'll be able to see that RGB-ness sort of coming through. So these are CL16, two eight gig sticks, DDR4 3000 from Team Group. Um, and yeah, you can sort of check in right there and sort of see how that's going. That's the sort of memory that we're using. You can see those LED strips and stuff there. Interesting, very, very interesting stuff. And uh, I guess, ah, so we've got Miranda here in the chat. I wonder who that might be. Maybe it's someone I know who's named Miranda is in the chat. Thanks for using our super chat functionality. We have enabled that for the chat. So thank you for, um, for supporting us there. All right, let's put in some memory. I'm always a fan of putting the memory before you put it into the case. And uh, let's put, put it actually in slots one and two. Make sure we get those in the right way. Fun stuff. All right, well, we've got the base sort of stuff there all ready to go. Certainly a bit heavier now that we've got all that stuff on the system. Um, and yeah, certainly it's looking good. Looking good. And of course, Intel Optane memory there in the center as well. Are you guys interested in Optane? It's not something we've been doing a lot of testing with. Let us know in the chat if you think that we should be doing a bit more with Optane, sort of comparing it to HDDs, SDD, SSDs, and all that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I guess that's why I was sort of curious about the board because, you know, Intel says speeds up everything. We'll see how that goes in some actual testing at some point in the future. All right, let's clear out some of the uh, packaging. <coughs> Tom says, I thought slots zero are, um, slots zero and two are populated first. This motherboard has slots, doesn't have a slot zero. It has slots one through to four. So I um, guess that's interesting. Romnipotent says in the chat, thanks for using our super chat feature. It does actually support us. So for those of you who are supporting us through Patreon or through super chat, all of that definitely goes to helping us out. Let's all use stickers, Tim. Pick a selection of the case that you can hide, but every sticker has a memento of stream building it. Yeah, maybe I should put the sticker on the case. I did throw it around over there somewhere, but um, yeah, it would be cool, I guess, is sort of if you have a case to put the stickers on as you sort of build up over time and sort of show all the different things that have been in there over time, because I guess cases are one of those things that you don't really upgrade too often. So, Speaking of case, I think it's time to actually get the case out. Something we haven't shown on the stream yet, the Darkbase 700, which 
Conveniently, I took out of the box before doing it on the stream because I thought, you know what, T trying to take a case out of a box on a live stream is prone to all sorts of fails and you know, I'd prefer not to have those sort of things going on the internet. But then again, the first stream didn't work. That was the biggest fail so far. So, you know, try and, try and fix one thing from happening, try and prevent one thing, the second thing happens anyway. So I guess that's the way it sort of works. So this is the Dark Base 700. Interesting sort of case. Uh, it's quite big, but I guess, you know, sometimes we need space. It's got, if we look around here, you know, all that tempered glass goodness. We've also got the PSU shroud and everything. Again, I've just taken this out. I have not done anything with it so far. But uh, let's get this thing open. I do like the cases that have got the um, thumb screws for taking off the tempered glass because that definitely makes it uh, much easier to sort of move this stuff around. As long as, of course, it's properly dampened and everything so that you're not getting vibrations when you're, um, you know, actually using the system. But that does have some nice rubber stuff there. Oh, where should I put this? Let's put it down here. That's for the future. And of course, we have in here as well the box of all the goodies. Ah uh, yes, Steve's, Steve has done the research for us. For those asking, the Optane model is $15 more on Amazon. So that's actually not too bad. I ha Gigabyte hadn't sent over pricing for the Z370 Aorus Ultra Gaming Wi-Fi with Optane. Um, but here it's only $15 more. That, you know, for some people, I know, you know, if you're heavy on SSDs, then it might be better to just use SSDs. But, you know, considering it's only 15 bucks, if you're planning on getting, say, you know, a couple of hard drives, you're planning on maybe sort of just a SATA SSD, Spending extra 15 bucks to get that Optane. That actually sounds not too bad as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, certainly a good deal. So th as you can see here, this is the box that has all the other cool stuff in it. And oh, it seems like one of the little baggies, it's got the uh, screws in it, has come a bit loose. But we've got all the usual sort of stuff with a Be Quiet case that you can see in here. Um, make sure I don't actually press the mouse with stuff. I think that's turned the sensitivity up on my mouse crazily high. Let's fix that. Yeah, that's nice, very nice. Um, okay, so what else is happening in the chat at the moment? Would I do a low end power supply rant? Uh, it depends. Depends. I think there's certainly a lot of really crappy power supplies out there. Um, don't don't cheap out in a power supply. Um, it's very important to make sure you get an actual good quality one. So thumb screws, uh, the little standoffs, they're already installed, so I don't have to do that, which is nice. But I will put this in. I'll put in the I/O shield. Tom asks, is there a cost difference between the board with Optane and one with that? Yes, $15, as it turns out. Thanks, Steve, for looking that up. I looked yesterday and there wasn't actually pricing on it, so it's interesting that now there is pricing. Slam in that I.O. shield. All right. So, motherboard is in. It's quite a nice looking case, I've got to say, having seen this just now for the first time. Yeah, it's not bad. Quite like the interior. Nice and open, very, very open. Lots of space for airflow and that sort of thing in this particular case. Let's move this, oh, let's put this back here actually. There you guys go. Oh, unstable box stack. All right. So let's move this over here. 
All right, now I need to go get my trusty screwdrivers because we're going to screw in the motherboard. That case is huge. Yeah, it is. It is, but you know, if you're getting a typical sort of case that just fits your standard ATX motherboard and that sort of thing, uh, it's definitely no larger than your sort of typical case for that. You know, the space between here and the, uh, the space just for the motherboard is just big enough to fit that ATX board in. So, you know, it's not like you're getting extra space around the sort of sides and everything. Um, and there's definitely no sort of cable management holes below the motherboard like you get in some cases. I would say though it's, it is quite wide. There's a 140 millimeter fan on the back and there's, I believe as well, a 140 mil in the front and you've got multiple slots for your 140s in the front. You've got slots for your um, radiators at the top and I believe you can get them in the front as well. So, you know, as far as that's concerned, it certainly is a bit of that wider sort of case, but 140 fans are quite good. I quite like them. So, um, yeah, as far as that's going. You like that screwdriver set? Yeah, if you're in Australia and you can get these through Bunnings Warehouse, really cheap and they're quite good, quite good screwdrivers. So I don't mind those. All right. So what else is going on in the chat over here? Should I remove the four pin power from my Crosshair 6 Hero and use just the eight pin? Um, yeah, I think it depends on the sort of overclocking you're doing, but as far as I'm aware, um, I've been using my uh, Gigabyte board that has both the eight and four pin and just using the eight pin. And it's been perfectly fine even for overclocking. So I think, you know, they have that option there for the extreme overclockers. You need that bit more CPU power. But for most people, the standard 8-pin power should be perfectly fine. Do you mean Bunnings Snag House? Of course I mean Bunnings Snag House. You can't go there to Bunnings Warehouse without buying some sausages, especially if you're there on a weekend. There's no better time to sort of go do your home DIY, get a whole bunch of stuff from there and just go straight in get your sausage and go. Sausages taste pretty good too, and you support local charities and all that. For people overseas who are wondering what the hell I'm talking about, Bunnings Warehouse is our major sort of hardware store where you go, you can buy your timber, you can buy your tools, you can buy your screws, all that sort of thing. And every weekend they have sort of like a barbecue out the front. It's really cool. It's really cool people go there, support the local charities and everything. And yeah, it's certainly fun. And I can't believe I'm talking about Bunnings Warehouse on a live stream on the internet. So that certainly is some fun stuff to be going on there. Okay. Tighten those bad boys up there. Boards in nice and securely. Okay. So let's make sure we don't spill screws are out, out all over the uh, all over the place. How do I accurately calculate PC power draw to choose a PSU wattage? Um, there are some good P like power draw calculators out there, but typically what you find is that with, you know, even if you're using a 650 watt power supply, that even with some high end components in your system and overclocking, that you really won't get towards the upper limit of that power supply. So as long as you're sort of choosing sort of that 500 watt plus range, and you're not going with like crazy dual GPU setups or making a mining rig or anything like that, most of those sort of power supplies would be perfectly fine for a typical sort of gaming system. Just make sure you get something that's actually a quality brand. Make sure that it's at least like 80 plus certified and everything so that, you know, you like this particular power supply, 80 plus gold. This is the perfect sort of power supply for a build, 650 watt. It gives you plenty of headroom. If you're wondering about, you know, how we calculate actual power draw and stuff, we use like external wall monitors and stuff to see what the total system power draw is straight from the wall. And, you know, it's doesn't really ever approach that 600 watt mark unless you're really pushing your system and you've got some, you know, crazy sort of stuff in there. So I think with power supplies, you know, it tends to be not too difficult to sort of find the right ones. Romnipotent says sausage sizzle stream. Yeah, that would be uh, pretty, pretty fun to do. That's for sure. Tom says, so I'm guessing mining isn't all that profitable in Australia. Yeah, uh, mining in Australia, not something, our power prices are like, quite high by world standards so 
the sort of profit you can make from mining here isn't that good unless you had like you'd already invested in like a solar array or something and you're sort of more off grid if you're getting your power straight from the grid it really isn't worth it to do it here it's um yeah quite expensive so I guess that's a little bit why Australia hasn't been hit as hard with the graphics card pricing sort of thing. Um, while the US was hit like super bad in that sort of regard, at least over here in Australia, um, it's been going not too bad at the moment in terms of graphics card pricing. Availability tends to be a bit difficult from time to time. All right, make sure I don't explode my voice before going to Computex by doing a live stream. So let's get this uh, silent loop in. Let's take a look at this actually. Love that sound of packaging. It's always fun to sort of uh, look into. It's got the fans. Obviously, they come separately, like with most closed loop liquid coolers. And here's the actual two mini two two eighty millimeter radiator, I should say, and it's all its plastic glory. So we'll be looking at that in just a second. And yeah, so they do provide a whole bunch of stuff, including a little tube of thermal grease in there that we'd put, be putting on. Some of them, these companies apply the uh, apply the grease directly to the um, cold plate there straight off the bat, but I like being able to apply it myself. All you guys will be able to criticize me for my application of the thermal paste in just a little bit, so we'll have a bit of fun with that. Let's clear all this stuff out of the way and get to putting this 280 millimeter radiator together. So we do have those RGB rings. I'm gonna leave those though for the case fans just to sort of simplify the whole situation. And I'll be installing this in the top of the case. That's if you can install a radiator in the top, I think you can. Or would you guys prefer me to see it installed in the front? Because I can do either, I reckon. All looking fine there. Any plans to overclock on stream? Um, potentially in a different video, we might be doing that. Just for this live stream though, we thought, you know, let's test out live stream. Let's do a, a build video and see how that goes. First time ever streaming on a, on a channel will be very, very interesting. Gonna have fun cleaning up in here before I have to film News Corner tomorrow, that's for sure. So, okay, let me take a look at this case and sort of see how we might go about installing some stuff in here. I'm thinking the front mount might work a little bit better in this particular case, which means we have to remove the, uh, the old front cover. So, how do you remove the front cover on this sort of case? It will be an interesting sort of task because I certainly haven't looked at this case before. Let's get this around this way so I can sort of have a better look, make sure I don't put the case on any power supplies or anything like that. Um, yeah, so we'll figure that out in just a moment, but first of all, I will unscrew this fan setup. Let's take a look here while I try and embarrass myself to sort of find where this sort of comes out. Ah, here we go. Ah, simple stuff. Simple stuff here. And there we go. Oh, it's quite a heavy sort of design here. It's got some rubber on the inside. I guess that's a bit of sound dampening foam there. Of course, you've got those connectors there that connect up to the front for the... Uh, illumination that goes along with this particular case. So I'll put that down just for a second. And uh, of course,
course, we have to remove this. How often do you guys clean your uh, fan filters? I always find every single time I look at my fan filter, it's absolutely filthy. So, <laughs> I'm probably not the most diligent person ever when it comes to removing those sort of things. <clears throat> I think I might need a slightly bigger screwdriver for that, those fan mounts there. Don't step on it, the thing. Yes, I've put on a box so I won't step on it. <laughs> that would be pretty bad to be doing a live stream build where you're featuring some Be Quiet stuff and you completely destroy it on the stream. That would certainly be fun. <clears throat> so yeah, fun stuff, got to say. Love building my PCs. I'm sure all of you guys do too as well. I think Computex as well, we will see some really interesting stuff there. <coughs> Sorry guys. Yeah, I think we'll see some really interesting stuff at Computex this year. I'm not sure about the GPUs. Um, Nvidia keeps telling us at least that their event that they're having there is meant to be a, a small press event. Um, two hours apparently qualifies as a small press event in Nvidia's mind. So um, we'll see how that goes in terms of... Uh... Oh, I see. This is actually connected straight over to the back. We're going to need to take a look at the back of this case to get that fan mount out. Um, yeah, so NVIDIA, they, they're having a two-hour sort of press event on the Monday before Computex starts, and they say that it is a small event. Um, whether or not small means uh, we're going to surprise you with GPUs or small means we're going to talk for the entire stream about, you know, our drive compute stuff and our, you know, Quadro cards and all that. Um, but yeah, so I'm not 100% sure whether we'll see NVIDIA cards at, at Computex or not. I think it'll be interesting if they do show it, but the things that I think we're definitely going to see, we're definitely going to see some B450 boards, we're definitely going to see some Threadripper stuff, Threadripper's second generation. Um, at least all the signs are pointing that way at the moment. And as well, you know, we might see a few other interesting bits and pieces from companies potentially. Uh, the Coffee Lake, you know, we're expecting to see 8-core Coffee Lake soon, Z390 soon. I think those two things as well. Bootman, thank you for contributing to us through the Super Chat stuff, asks, is motherboard quality same on AMD slash Intel now? I think definitely with the X470 range, we're starting to see some really high quality AMD motherboards. With the launch of Z370, I think AMD sort of came out, you know, no one was really, no one really knew how Ryzen would go in terms of its performance, whether it was worth investing a lot of money to make those really high quality motherboards. So I think some of the X370 boards perhaps could have had, you know, a bit better VRM cooling, a bit better routing on the motherboard, more layers, better memory support. But a lot of those things have been fixed with X470 because the motherboard manufacturers have seen just how, you know, big Ryzen is at the moment and how much support there is for that sort of thing. So I definitely think at the moment, if you're getting X470, if you're getting X uh, Z370, that you're gonna get very similar quality between those boards, especially from some of the high-end stuff. Definitely no more um, skimping on quality on the AMD side as you know, manufacturers sort of learn what is gonna sell and what isn't gonna sell. And I think a lot of those companies were perhaps a bit surprised at the success of Ryzen, which has sort of meant that they're going a bit harder all out on the sort of second gen stuff. And yes, yeah, Steve is in the chat. Remove these twist ties. Good for cable management, but not good for figuring out where this fan routes. Further down still. straight into the fan controller. So another Be Quiet fan, probably could put this on the, um, well, we've got two different fans, got pure wings here for the close of liquid cool, and got the silent wings three for the case fans, but we'll keep that for later, find potentially there might be somewhere else to put it. But now that we've got that front one out, we can sort of see how this is gonna go in. So yeah, that should go in nicely. <clears throat> I 
All right, let's get the fans on. Now, because we're using in the front, of course, they're gonna be intake fans. Uh, in the AMD build, when I put in the top, I also, made them, I also made them intake, and a lot of people were questioning why I would put them intake when I also had front intake fans. And the reason for that is, is that, um, you know, uh, you want positive pressure in cases, pushes the dust out, keeps the dust out. It doesn't really make too much of a difference in general from the sort of stuff we've seen, whether you have your top mounts, either intake or exhaust, but you know, you wanna make sure that your overall fan configuration is gonna uh, be pushing air out of the case most of the time. <coughs> so yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, okay, so we're gonna have to put these, obviously the cooler is gonna go in this way, like this. So we're gonna have to have the fans on this side. And because they're intake, we're gonna put them up this way. And make sure I don't screw it up when doing it. Because there have been some times, of course, you install a cooler, you realize you put the fans around the wrong way. But that tends to be super annoying. All right, let's find the right screws and stuff that we're gonna to have to use. Look at our AMD mounting kit, which we're not gonna need for this particular build. Yeah, some people getting impatient with NVIDIA already. Yeah, it's been, been a very long generation, a very, very long generation of cards. Um, it'll be really good to get some new stuff from them, but it's really hard to say when they're sort of gonna be making everything. Because <coughs> we've got, we've had this stuff for a while, the uh, Pascal stuff for a while. They've teased us with the Titan V. It'd be really nice to get an 1180 Ti or something, or 1180, who knows? but it certainly would be nice to get some more stuff from NVIDIA. Where did I put my screwdrivers? Ah, here they are. So yeah, let us know what you want us to sort of go around and take a look at at Computex. Um, we'll be there for quite a while, so we'll certainly be making a lot of content there. Um, if you see anything cool, um, give us a shout out, we'll go check it out. Um, make sure you're following us on all the relevant feeds and everything, just to make sure that you can get all the latest and greatest stuff from us. And yeah, probably should get some more water. Make sure I don't spill this water inside the uh, case as well. That would be bad. Make sure you get some lovely drinking sounds from me there. All right, what else has been going on in the stream? Zero dropped frames, that's very nice. Very, very nice to have zero drop frames so far. Why no second camera? Well, I can show you the second camera, but at the moment it looks a bit dodgy. You can sort of see here, whoa, second camera. So you can sort of see inside the case at the moment. Let me get a bit more, there we go. So you can sort of see what we've done here already with the board, and this is where the uh, liquid cooler is gonna go. But for the moment, we're just gonna install the fans on the liquid cooler and uh, go from there. Graham says, get a new chair in the super chat feature. Um, yeah, a lot of people complain about this, uh, about this old man chair. Let me know what you think about the old man status of this particular chair and whether or not I should get certainly a gaming chair. Um, this is just our dining chairs. So yeah, it can't be too bad, but I guess for comfort, if you're doing a lengthy gaming session, you're not gonna wanna sit in something like that. Where can I get the water bottle? Um, that is a Qualcomm water bottle. Um, so yeah, it says Qualcomm on it. They gave it to me at something. I'm not sure where else you can get it. It'd be cool if you get it. It's a really good water bottle, actually. <clears throat> so there'll be lots and lots of screwing in this video. Oh, that sounds bad, doesn't it? Lots of screwing. I meant screwing in screws for fans, not other sorts of screwing. <coughs> Probably see that other sort of, oh my God, I just dropped the screw through here. Let's get that out. So 
this is normally all the stuff that we would do off camera, sort of this building stuff. Normally we'd sort of be filming it as we go and sort of making all that nice B-roll, but you know, I wanted to change it up a little bit and do a live stream, see how that goes. What else are you guys saying? This is a good time to sort of read the chat and sort of see how it's going. You can't screw on YouTube. Yeah, that's definitely true. You know, if we put that sort of screwing on YouTube, I think there'll be some uh, questions coming our way. Probably violate the uh, community guidelines. That's for sure. <clears throat> Yeah, demonetized, that'd be right. Demonetized. Did you guys pay for FTTP NBN? Aussie internet isn't usually this good at streaming. Uh, I'm lucky enough to have fibers of the premises here, so I've got the good NBN, um, which definitely helps uh, for stuff like live streaming and all that. Um, but obviously a lot of other people get way worse deals when it comes to the NBN. So I'm just lucky that I'm in a fiber to the premises area. Steve is on fixed wireless, which is just awful. Fixed wireless internet, no good at all. Yeah, fiber to the node, I've heard some my parents are with fiber to the node and it's been perfectly fine for them, but I think they're quite close to the node, so that probably helps them out a fair bit. YouTube is the only place screwing does not make money. Well, you say that, I'm doing some screwing on the channel right now, and hopefully we'll be making some AdSense money, but who knows? Fiber to the node, yeah, 1.3 kilometers from the node, 22 megabits, yeah, that's unfortunate. Not too much better than ADSL there. Yeah, the internet situation in Australia is really not that good. If you're really lucky to get a place with fiber, then great. Otherwise, you're stuck with like cable internet, which has terrible upload speeds that we couldn't do this sort of thing with. Fiber to the node, what else? ADSL, yeah, it's just all a mix up. Yeah, I know I, some, someone says here in the chat, cable internet, 500 megabit down, 25 megabit up. Um, yeah, in some countries you can get that, but just for, for here for some reason, they, don't, they haven't upgraded the uh, HFC infrastructure for a while, so it's like really outdated and yeah, hasn't been maintained very well. And the whole, the whole network is just crumbling into pieces. So that's sort of why you see, um, yeah, that sort of, thing not doing too well over here, um, which is unfortunate because the actual way cable internet works is quite good uh, and can be upgraded and everything like that. It's just that, you know, as far as uh, the companies that we have to provide cable internet, they're not really doing uh, as good of a job as you would uh, potentially hope for. So of course we need the uh, dongle that attaches the two fans into one. We will do that in just a moment. But first, let's screw in the uh, screw in the radiator. How about that? <clears throat> mm. Copper should be dead. Yeah, yeah, it really should be at this point. It's certainly certainly if you're building sort of a new uh, network uh, for your internet it would be certainly advisable not to make it with copper in any part of the network at this point, but you know, companies try cheap out. So let me see if this will actually fit in this way. I think it will just fit with the cables at the top. So you can sort of see here, let's get onto this second camera that we have over here. You can see here at the moment, I've got the uh, uh, liquid cooling 
loop at the top, which is my preference here. And I think it's just gonna be a little tight getting the screws into the top section here. But um, other, other than that, yeah, I think I might have to, it's an interesting fit with this particular cooler in this particular case, but I think it should be just okay. Just on the, the maximum sort of cooler size that you could get in the front here is certainly this 280 millimeter that we've got here. Um, so that will be working quite well. <clears throat> we were getting so close to a world-class network. Yeah, that's definitely true. Definitely true. We were gonna get a good internet here and then unfortunately some things happen. New governments come in, they change it all up. And that's just the way it goes, unfortunately, sometimes. Hmm. It is a strange, yeah, I'm gonna have to pull that back just slightly, I reckon, to get that in, get that fitting in a bit better. Is the CPU delitted? Uh, no, the CPU is not delitted. Uh, just as a general thing that we sort of do with our review units and testings, we try to keep it as the sort of, we know a lot of people do delid their CPUs, but certainly for the sort of things that we want to be testing, um, most people don't, so we sort of figure, um, you know, we want to keep the, the way we use our hardware to be as close to the way that you guys are using your hardware. And considering most of you guys don't deal it, we want to sort of keep that, that sort of the same so that we can give you guys the same impressions that we always do on the, uh, the rest of the stuff. So after I install this liquid cooler, let's give Steve a call. Steve, are you watching the stream? Because uh, you should prepare yourself once I've got this thing installed to uh, get, get into some Skype action. Um, this did work before, the Skype stuff, so hopefully it'll work again. Uh, still got a few more screws for the radiator to go. We've got to put on the thermal paste and attach the radiator first. So, yeah, certainly interesting stuff. Great Master Gaming says, I'm at school. Yeah, this is a really good use. This is, this is going to be more educational than whatever you're doing at school, trust me. I've been to school, I've been to uni, and I would learn way more from YouTube live streams than being at school. Um, if, if YouTube live streams were more of a thing back then. There were a thing while I was at uni, but not as much in, in high school and stuff. Yeah, it should probably work. Uh, I don't know about that. Surely watching, um, surely watching a hardware unbox live stream is better than doing school work. Schoolwork sucks. And this is coming from someone who spent five years at uni. No one I know that still has Foxtel thinks it's good. Um, I'm like, get rid of it. It's good for sport. I have Foxtel to watch AFL, but apart from that, um, yeah. Cord cutting is definitely the way to go. Just watching stuff through, you know, your, your Netflixes and, and all that sort of thing is a lot better than using Foxtel to sort of watch your TV shows and stuff. Steve says to stay in st school, kids. Yes, definitely stay in school. Just if you're doing a hard, we're doing a hard round box live stream, um, it might be the best idea. You know, I'm not going to put that last screw in because that's, I've got, seven of the eight screws in anyway. That one's gonna be a little difficult to get in. Now, school, school doesn't suck. It's definitely important to, to go to school and actually learn things. But it certainly sometimes isn't the most enjoyable thing. I d definitely understand that. And I think with uni as well, like I really enjoyed going to uni and I really enjoyed, you know, you make friends at uni, you learn a lot of stuff. I did an engineering degree, so obviously there's a lot of maths involved and, and all that stuff was certainly very interesting. So yeah, there's definitely plenty of reason to, to stay in school and do degrees and all that sort of thing. I ended up making YouTube videos now after doing a degree. So you never know how your life's gonna turn out. 
but certainly there are lots of useful things that you can learn at, at uni. And, you know, if I wasn't doing this, I would have gone into doing engineering and probably would have had an okay job doing that. So yeah, there's definitely a reason to, to enjoy stuff. And, and really, if you are in school and you're sort of thinking about what you want to do, definitely look at all the STEM careers and all that sort of thing. Because it's really important, having STEM jobs and everything is really important and to sort of continue to, to grow all that science and maths and technology and everything. Because without that, we wouldn't have people that engineer the products that we're using for these sort of build videos. So, um, yeah, one thing I would say though is definitely enjoy your time at school. Definitely enjoy your time at school. <clears throat> now I probably, in hindsight, should have put this bracket on before I put the, uh, before I put the rest of it in. <clears throat> but you know, that's just the way it goes. In fact, I think I'm gonna to need to take the motherboard out because I need to put on this retention arm on the back. So let me just have a look there, yeah. Because I didn't open the cooler box before I did this, this definitely needs to go on the back of the motherboard. So, whoops, screwed that one up a little bit. RTD to ask what footy team? I support the Adelaide Crows, who are not doing too well at the moment. <laughs> not doing too well. Got absolutely smashed on the weekend. So let's have some fun taking the motherboard out and putting the cooler arm on. I knew I'd stuff up something during the stream and it'd be putting in the motherboard too early. So you get another good look at this board in just a moment as we pull it out. <clears throat> All right. So yes, we definitely need to put that on because this, this bracket goes on the front. And this little bracket goes on the back. So let's just align all the holes, get the little standoffs in through all the holes. Make sure that fits in. Nice, all right, let's get off the little bits of tape. I'm surprised unis here in Australia don't offer YouTubing courses. That would be interesting. There certainly is a lot more that goes into making a YouTube channel, I think a lot of people realize, so. And it's a lot of fun to make YouTube videos as well, even if you're not, you know, doing it on a professional level, um, you know, doing it as your job. If you, even if you just do it as a hobby, it can certainly be a lot of fun, so. Let's make sure we get all of those in the right holes. See. The little rubber bits have been. They weren't properly going through, so. Alright, that's better. They're not going to move now when I try to put those in. Just a bit loose there on the end, in the end. Okay. Mm. 
Right, there we go, they're all through now. All through. And just to make sure, I'm going to install the, the block on this before putting it back in. Otherwise we might, might get a few more issues, but hopefully not. So, please remove before using. Yeah, very important stuff to do that. Let's get this slotted on first. So I believe these need to go in here like this. So yeah, just click those on. There, nice and clicked on. And that should be ready to go. So hopefully we can get that in there, all nice. Okay. Remove stock thermal paste, bro, please. It doesn't actually come with thermal paste uh, on the CPU cooler. They have provided this thermal grease, which I'm just going to use that because it's been included. Why not? We'll see how it goes. I can always replace it later. Okay, this retention bracket mechanism, got to say, not the, not the most intuitive and easy way to install this thing. It'd be nice if there was a way to um, clamp those into a specific point on this thing, sort of stop them from sliding around as much. <clears throat> Alright, let's call Steve, let's give him a, a call and see what's going on. make sure that everything is going okay. Got this other webcam here that we've got going on, so I can just uh, scoot over here. And uh, let's see if we can call him and see what's going on. Steve, are you there? I'm not sure we're getting any audio from you. Testing, testing, is the audio working at the moment? Got no idea. Well, we tested it. This is another thing that we tested yesterday <clears throat> that was uh, not working at the moment. Let me see what I can do here. Um, right, let me just switch back to over here so I can do some stuff over here and see what people are, see what's going on here.
Interesting stuff on the stream here. Testing stuff that works on one day, doesn't work on the other day. It's always nice when stuff like that happens. Can we hear you now, Steve? Uh, I don't know. You tell me. Is that working? I think that's uh, working. Hopefully. hopefully. Can you guys hear me? Hopefully. <laughs> We're good. Don't know what uh, changed there. Okay. Well, yeah. Nothing works the first time on YouTube, apparently. Yeah, that's right. Can't believe that we tested everything yesterday and everything was working fine. And then you come around this day and then, like, literally nothing works. Second time today, around. Today is not the day to stream. Anyway, we are back. So, how are we going with this uh, CPU block install? They have uh, standoff. You've got to, you've got to screw into the back plate first, don't they? Yeah, this one's got like a uh, like a plastic thing with the little standoffs that go through, and you're supposed to stick it on the back. But the adhesive isn't very strong, so it's like oh, not don't bother doing that. Just sit it there on the desk like you had it, and put the top screws in, and then you and then you can sit the board in. Oh, that's a good way to do it. Yeah, pro tip. Pro tip from the pro. <laughs> i gotta got to get you building more computers. Too many laptops for Tim. Yeah, that's right. Just got to figure out where I actually put the screws for this thing. So, yeah, if you have any questions for Steve, feel free to put them into the chat. And, um, yeah, we'll do some, uh, do some Q&A stuff. Yep, I'm really excited for the thermal paste application. We'll have to jump to the second camera for that and <laughs> and get a look at that. That's going to be good. Oh, people are going to be so mad at whatever I do. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> You've been watching the um, whole stream. How's it been going so far, Steve? Yeah, really good. You can stick me up in the top corner if you want. People don't want to look at me. Oh, come they wanna, on. They want to see the build. I can just answer questions. I'll just be a, a voice. You've got you've got me in there twice anyway. I think you've got two uh, videos of me. One is plenty. <laughs> One is plenty, <laughs> is it? Uh, Steve, if you were to take all the hardware you have, how much would it cost? Uh, I don't know. It'd be a lot. It'd, it'd definitely be a lot. <laughs> I don't really know how much. Probably don't want to work it out and advertise that fact. But that yeah, I've got a lot. Um, Steve, say banana, banana. Hope you got your money's worth on that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's all our funny accents, mate. You know, it's just just the way the Aussie world works. Managed to talk about Bunnings Warehouse on the stream and NBN. We're getting we're hitting all the uh, Aussie buzzwords on this particular show. Oh, the Bunnings chat was one of the highlights for me. Love my Bunnings snags. Do your Bunnings? <laughs> do you have a Bunnings nearby, Steve? Uh, well, relatively nearby. It's about twenty minutes away, so that that qualifies. That That's qualifies. close for me. That's, that's very local. Uh, but, yeah, the reason I'm not there today helping Tim do this build is because I'll be driving to Tim's house in two days' time to go to Computex, and it is a five-hour round trip to get to Tim's place from my place and then back again. So I didn't really want to do that when we – I've got two videos I have to finish before the weekend before we go to Computex, so I'm working on those. But obviously I've stopped to join you guys on the live stream. So yeah, a bit time sensitive at the moment. I didn't really want to spend five hours in the car today. So I thought we'd just dial in this way. But if we do this again in a month or so, I'd definitely like to join Tim because it looks like he's having a lot of fun there and I'm missing out just sitting at home watching. Oh, it certainly is a lot of fun doing some PC building on a live stream. Didn't really know how this was going to go at all and it seems to be going okay, I would say. Yeah, I think you're doing a great job. It's going good. I've been, I've been enjoying watching. And uh, chatting with the guys in the chat. But yeah, we we do have to get Tim uh, an unboxing knife, so we'll, we're working on that. Yep. Uh, what else? <laughs> Five hours. Yeah. Well, it without traffic, what would you say, Tim? It's about an hour and a half to two hours to get. From my place to your place or vice yeah, versa? Yeah, it depends on how much of the roadworks you get hit by on the way. Yeah. I think if there's no roadworks, it'd be an hour and a half. But at the yeah, moment, it's probably so. like hour 45, hour 50. Yep. And we have yep. really slow speed limits in Australia, so that doesn't help. Yeah, and if you catch peak hour traffic, then it could be a lot more than five hours. So, 
yeah, but we like to catch up once a month, do the Q and A's and we do the patron live stream and maybe we'll start doing, you know, a, a sort of a, a build stream uh, two weeks away from the Q and A or something like that. So I'll be driving to Tim's place twice a month instead of once. Uh, and I am right now coming to you guys through the 4G on my phone because my NBN Wi-Fi dropped out twice while I was watching this stream. So I just changed over to my phone. So hopefully I don't drop out. That's just the luck of the, the hard run box live stream. You, know, <laughs> you test literally everything the day before. You, we've been doing live streams for our Patreons for how many months is it now? Since the start of I the know. year plus. I know, I know. Yeah. And um, you go to do a live stream on the main channel and everything stops working. Like yeah, everything. Well, we worked out not to do the even the patron live streams from my place because that's been challenging. Yeah, but, uh, is anyway, not, not that good. Uh, what computer are you bringing to Computex? I'm. I'm. We're both taking laptops. Uh, we're both taking six core Intel laptops, a six core twelve thread bets because we're doing video editing and encoding. So we need the most powerful laptops we can get our hands on. Uh, Tim is using an Acer one, which he has in the live stream here, and I'll be taking a new MSI model. Uh, is it the GS63? That's it, isn't it, Tim? You're the laptop yeah. expert. The GS65, I think, is the new one. That's the oh, one I 65. reviewed on the channel, right? A couple of... Oh, okay, yeah. Yep, yeah, it must be. Uh, I'll be taking the one that Tim reviewed recently. So I think that'll be good. It's a good laptop. It's really good. So I think you'll definitely enjoy that yeah yeah see well your review uh certainly made it sound quite good so i'll be interested to see if it it stands up to tim's review there um yes i am on wireless uh, mbn wireless and speeds are pretty good for the most part it's a what is it a 50 20 plan so it's not amazing but a, a year or two years ago i was uploading all our 4k youtube videos on adsl plus and it took about a day to upload the videos so now it takes an hour so i'm pretty happy with that yeah <laughs> a lot better than a day how's the build going where are you up to my face is covering the uh, pc case at the moment on the stream oh yeah hang on let me uh let me fix that actually <laughs> we'll put you over here we'll block the laptop how about that that, that looks are a you bit guys going to test store mi yeah tim and i have talked about that we have yeah, I think we're going to. Uh, it'll possibly we'll do something with this new Optane build as well. So I don't know, but yeah, that's something to look at when we get back from Computex. Plenty of things uh, to do at the moment. I've just put together a Vega 56 versus GTX 1070 Ti revisit with some of the newer games released this year, the latest drivers, of course. And there's about 25 games I've done, so that'll be a video for Sunday, I believe. Uh, but yeah, that was an interesting update i suppose on the uh, that that battle so not i know super exciting because of the way graphics card prices are and they're two years old now at least the pascal series is but it's an update so yeah that should be an interesting one to look out for and then i have some uh, memory tests with uh, coffee lake for saturday so yeah plenty of videos in the pipeline of course tomorrow we have news corner so Tim will be getting onto that straight after the live stream, no doubt. Yeah, I'll have to look at the topics from this week. I haven't really been keeping up too much on the news of the week. Yeah, exactly. Um, Steve, would you guys ever discuss the deeper architecture of components, kind of like Gamers Nexus? Um, yeah, we've done, we do those videos from time to time. It's not something we focus on a lot. Um, I suppose there's only so much content you can do. They've sort of focused on that. We focused on sort of i know they do a lot of in-depth benchmarking as well we just do a different kind of in-depth benchmarking and then tim's going to start doing his in-depth monitor testing which he's already been doing a bit of but yeah we do those kind of things from time to time and sometimes we focus on other things as well around you know newly released technologies like we did with the ryzen apus uh but yeah i i think we sort of like to try and sort of fit somewhere between the normal youtube tech channels and gamers nexus so yeah, I think we'd be doing that quite well. What do you reckon, Tim? Yeah, I'd agree with you. I'm just about to put the uh, thermal paste on, so no, no doubt ah. there's going to be some... Uh... <laughs> we want the alternate camera. All right. Can that's... you put that other the other camera in, like, uh, picture in picture? To, like, the left above me or something? The other camera? I can do, like, this. Hang on. Is uh, We've got to see the thermal paste application. I, uh, 
there's no way you can do it right no matter which way you do it. We just want to see which wrong way you do it. So here we go. Let's get this better in the... Here we go. Here's our, here's our target down here. <laughs> um, okay, so guys, which way should we do the thermal paste? Do you prefer the line or do you prefer the dot? The, the X? There's so many different ways to do it. <laughs> You can't just do the dot either. It's the size of the dot. That's so. right. That's right. So let's take a look at the yeah. chat and see what people are thinking about the. Um, we'll wait to, for some uh, comments come in about the the way that we're going to do it. We want to know exactly what you guys think, and then I'm going to completely ignore all of it and just do what I reckon anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't think you can go too wrong, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. I think. I think the mod mat says you can do the dot or the cross for Coffee Lake. I can't recall exactly. Mm. I quite like the dot, I reckon. I like the dot. The dot's simple, easy, and it usually spreads pretty well, on, especially on the Coffee Lake. It's not a Threadripper chip. Okay, so here we go. Fingers crossed that it balls this one up. This is the key moment of the live stream happening right here is the thermal paste application. It's going very, very, very carefully. Get some, uh, we'll block it for you guys. <laughs> oh, yes. Success. I reckon that's nailed it right there. I can't actually see it right now because we're 20 seconds ahead of the actual stream, but. Yep, I'm there waiting. we go. I reckon that's good. Yeah, that looks like a pretty good amount to me. Yep. Should be right. If only wasn't trying to. There we go. There you can, guys can see it a bit better down there, in there. <laughs> well so that's done. the controversial thermal paste application gone completely wrong. Because, <clears throat> of course, everyone is going to be complaining about how much thermal paste I put on, about how I didn't put on enough. <laughs> uh, no, nah, it looks like you've done a good job there. I'd give that a pass. I've so. got to make sure that I've removed the warning label. <laughs> Because <laughs> otherwise, then I have to do it all again. There we go. Well, the the eighty seven hundred K will just melt that off. It'll melt a hole through it, and yep. you just have a. It'll take up any air gaps. So now I believe this this requires you to just put these through here with the spring on it. I think. Yep, that sounds right. Got to make sure I get everything out and ready to go. So what else is happening, Steve? What are you been up to today? More video <sighs> editing, like yesterday on the test stream? Yeah, I've well, I've been editing that 25 game GPU comparison that I just spoke about. So I've almost done that. So that's good. And nice. straight after this, I have to go film Saturday's video. So oh, yeah, yeah, I've pr I've done all the testing for that. There's a lot of interesting results in that one. So I think you guys are really going to enjoy that. Uh, it's a mainly Intel focused video with the Core i5-8400, but yeah, it's really good. So uh, some GPU scaling results in that one. So that should uh, should make quite a few viewers happy, I think. But, and then uh, I think, well, hopefully on Friday, I've got to start doing a sort of checklist of all the things we have to take to Computex because it's not going to yeah, be too good if I forget well. something. Yeah, yeah. We definitely need to make sure that we're maximizing our luggage space as well. Yes, yes, definitely. You can take um, like a million kilos, can't you? You play business class flyer. Uh, I think 40 is the limit for what I've got. Um, but yeah. Uh, what do you think is the max core count recommended for using the ring bus? Why did Intel decide to use the mesh instead? Uh, I don't know what the max is. We've seen the 6950X as a 10 core part that uses the ring bus, but it was a very big chip. It didn't overclock particularly well. And it was very power hungry when you started pushing it. So the ring bus is really great for like your 8700K. It obviously works well for six cores, though it does start to get quite power hungry. Not blaming a lot on the ring bus though. Uh, but Definitely when going, I would say beyond 10 cores, the mesh, uh, certainly beyond 20 anyway. I don't know what the exact number is because we don't have uh, a 
a ring bus CPU with more than 10 cores. So it's really hard to compare a ring bus and a mesh. And then there are other changes to the cache and stuff like that. So I can't really say for sure. Uh, but obviously the ring bus is exceptionally good, very low latency, and that's why it works really well with games. Uh, would the Wraith Prison be able to keep the Ryzen 7 17, 1700 overclocked to three point? Yeah, uh, yeah, the Wraith Prism would at 75, less than 75 degrees. Depends on your ambient temperatures and your case and whatever, but that seems doable uh, for the Wraith Prism on the Ryzen 7 1700. I'm just putting on the little screws to put the... Uh Closed loop liquid cooler on, just got to prepare it all before it goes on. I think my audio is a bit louder than yours. Um, turned my gain down a bit now, hopefully that's still okay. Oh, I reckon it'll be fine. Can't, can't be as bad as when we tried to start the stream and it didn't work. Yeah, uh, I don't know what was up with that, how frustrating. As Tim said, we spent quite a bit of time yesterday with our patron members running a test stream. And uh, Tim called me, we dialed in and we got the audio levels right and there was no real problems at all, was there yesterday? No, not really. Um, no, and then you go to start and it's just a choppy mess. I don't know what's up with that. Anyway. Yeah, leave it overnight and it completely fails on you. Oh, well, well, the worst part is we didn't even change anything to fix it. We just started the, uh, the stream again. So I think something must have gone wrong with that stream. Yeah, I restarted my computer, but apart from that. Yeah, don't know. Just the way it is, I guess. Why would you buy the Wraith Prism for your 1700? Surely uh, you should get a an aftermarket cooler. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, the AMD box coolers aren't worth buying because they are very pricey for what they are. And there's so many good aftermarket coolers for even 30, 40 US dollars, um, which, you know, 50, 60 Australian dollars. Uh, did you think about shipping things, t stuff to your hotel overnight? Do you mean from Australia? I think that'd be pretty expensive, wouldn't it? Overnight shipping from Australia to Taiwan. Oh yeah, yeah, that'd cost a fortune. Yeah, probably not cost effective. I mean, I think we can fit everything in our luggage. So I managed it last year by myself. So with both of us going, that should be a lot easier this year, and we should be able to make much better content this year as well. Um. Tim's audio is buzzing a little bit. It is a, it's got a slight buzz to it, but it's, you know, compared to how the stream started, I don't think we'll stress about it too much. We'll, we'll just optimize these build streams as we go. Um, but yeah, so. <clears throat> Steve, could you do an all white build? Uh, yeah, I could. Um, I might soon. I've got a few new cases and things and builds coming in for later in the month, so that could be an option. How's it going there, Tim? What are you up to now? Uh, yeah, just about to put the whole thing together, actually. So the spring, the spring screws went on without a problem? Yep. Excellent. Now I just have to figure out how to apply enough pressure to it to keep it all in while I uh, screw it all down. Gabriel says, is it right that AMD will offer double the cores in future CPUs? Don't know if it'll be double for all the models, but it's possible. Uh, again, I, we don't really know with these rumors and things, but when they go to seven nanometer, uh, which is comparable to Intel's 10 nanometer in size, it's certainly possible that there'll definitely be more cores, whether it'll be double, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, that'd be pretty awesome if it was especially if prices stay the same. What's a good 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler in Australia, for Australian buyers? Hmm, let me have a quick look and see what I can find here. That, uh, that model you've got, Tim, looks pretty interesting. Which one? The model you've got, the uh, Be Quiet Silent Loop 280. Yeah, it is interesting. Um, it certainly isn't, has got an interesting uh, mounting mechanism. Oh, I see why it's... Uh, yeah, see, you said to... Um, the back plate has come off again because the adhesive isn't very good, 
and it doesn't yep. like stick through. So no, I, I don't even bother using that. I just I pre I put all the mounting gear on first before I install it. Yeah, I mean it is possible to put the back plate on, but the thing is like you need to have the cooler, you need to have all this mounting stuff attached to the cooler on this side. And well, then, the other trick is you can remove the SD, the, uh, sorry, the SSD tray on the opposite side of the motherboard tray and then access the rear of the motherboard. Has and, it got a rear SSD yep. tray on this board? Uh, the case? Yeah. If it didn't, we'd be throwing it out right now. <laughs> uh, it definitely does, yeah. All right, let me take a look. Uh, what's a good, a good quality... Uh, the, yep. Uh, yep. We'll go master. that. We'll go that way. There we go. I'll put that link in the chat. That seems like I've used one of those before, and they seem to be fairly good quality. That seems like a good price for ninety Australian dollars. Otherwise, they do start to get up there a bit, well over a hundred dollars. But that's one I'd look into checking out just after a bit of a brief look there. Let's see what other questions have we got here. Uh, overclocking DDR3. Uh, mm, I don't know. I don't know if you'll get DDR3 2400 past 2600. I haven't done DDR3 overclocking for a long time. Um, it'll also come down to the memory controller as well so yeah I'm not haven't really got any good advice on that one got a bit of humming on your mic there again do I? yeah and your volume went right up so I'm not sure what that's all about huh. come back down now strange yeah. maybe that was just from me bending over and struggling with this uh, cooler yeah, it's sort of gone a bit distorted as well, but anyway, hopefully it'll it'll come back to us. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, having 10 plus uh, ring bus cores would best anything on the market. Good combination of cores and latency. Uh, I mean, not really, because you would probably have like a two gigahertz base frequency so to keep it within a reasonable TDP and you'd need an insanely beefy motherboard if you wanted to run that at any kind of frequency above like 4.5 gigahertz. So it's not really just a matter of just tacking on more cores at 14 nanometers and having a beefy chip. It'll, uh, a 10 plus core ring bus chip would at a reasonable frequency would yeah, consume a heck of a lot of power. It'd be a beast, but uh, yeah, you'd want a power plant for it. I honestly thought you guys, uh, Tim and Steve, worked in the same office. Nope. No, Tim works from his house and I work from my house. So, But we have set up Tim with a fairly decent studio or set now in his, in his garage. So I don't know if many of you guys remember the garage door from videos not that long ago. Fun times with the garage door. Yep. Uh, where, what else we got here? Uh, is the subscription-based Adobe software worth it to learn? Um, yeah, sure. I mean, you can. I believe you can just pay monthly if you wanted to. So you could give it a go for a month. I mean, it is, it is pricey software. Uh, I think I pay about thirty dollars a month, twenty-eight dollars or something like that. Uh, I haven't used many of the other editing software, but uh, Adobe Premiere Pro is very good, and I really enjoy it. And, yeah. I mean, I... Apart, uh, when it's when it's working and doing what you want it to, it does. Uh, can be a bit funny at times. Yeah, I used to use um, Sony Vegas for a while back when I was learning to video edit, and Premiere is by far and away better. Mm. At least at the time, which would have been a couple of years ago, but certainly Premiere has a lot more features that make our lives a lot easier. Yeah. All right. Got the cooler aligned and in. Now I just have to screw it in. Excellent. Very good. 
hopefully it works when you're done. It'll be embarrassing if you are get this thing built and it doesn't turn on. <laughs> oh, you're telling me. I mean, with all the other things that have gone wrong so far, yeah. struggling to put this cooler on, you know. That'll be the icing things. on the cake right there. Yep. But, you know, it's all about... It's all about having a bit of fun on a live stream and seeing what happens. Uh, Ace says, just curious as to how much of a dud my Ryzen 3 2200G is. CPU max is out at 3.8 gigahertz, IPG at 1500 megahertz, and it doesn't overclock RAM worth anything. DDR4 2666 with Samsung eDie. That could be more than memory there, uh, or the motherboard possibly. Uh, but that's not really a dud Basically, I think my 2200G did about 3.9 gigahertz. Uh, with I could only overclock the CPU or the iGPU. I couldn't overclock them both with the box cooler. So if you're using the box cooler, then that's actually a really good result. That's as good as any chip will do. Um, but yeah, 3.8 gigahertz on all cores isn't too bad. It's pretty good. And 1.5 gigahertz on the GPU, you're going to see pretty good gaming performance for what it is. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm scrolling through the uh, comments I'm getting there now. All right, I'm going to install one of these Fantex Halos on this uh, rear 140, I reckon. I'll just use one of them for this particular build. Okay. And uh, we'll see how that goes. So get remove yeah, I haven't this. used those before, so... It's interesting. If you want to add RGB to your build, I guess, you know, there's no better way than to sort of get one of these things if you don't want to buy RGB fans. <laughs> well, yeah, it's it depends on how much they cost individually, but it could be a, a cheaper way to upgrade the fans you already have if you want a bit of bling. They were pretty cheap from memory when I looked yesterday. Um, someone check bandwidth usage. The video looks grainy. Uh, it looks really clear, especially for a live stream on my end. We're in Australia, guys. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, not all of us have good internet. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you, um, uh, Biff Explore, Exploder uh, is saying that your you might have like automatic gain on your microphone. I don't. I don't know if you do or if you've got Windows adjusting it or software adjusting it. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure I turned it off. So, not sure why. Uh, Maybe something's just gone a bit crap recently. Are you planning to stream frequently from now on? Uh, yeah, if this goes well, this could be something we do, like I said, monthly. We do our Q&A monthly. We could also do a live PC build stream or something, I don't know, or even a live show once a month and go from there. We'll work it out. But uh, it really depends on whether you guys enjoy it or not. Are you sponsored by any PC tech brand? Um, not really. I mean, this content that we're doing right now has well it's technically been sponsored by pc case gear not financially but they've provided us with the gear so thumbs up to them thanks for that and gigabyte uh, of course with their and gig gigabyte they've sent along some hardware so you know we've got to give these and, and our team group and fantex which were all uh, provided through pc case gear but you know we've got to give those guys shout outs because this stuff costs a lot of money and we can't afford to do a monthly stream if we're buying the hardware that's uh, just not not going to happen So this is the halo thing that we're going to install and you just put that in between your fan and the uh so we've got the fan obviously well i can't take it out because it's actually attached in but i'm going to slot that between the case and the fan and then i think the the rgb will sort of glow through around the edge of the fan i guess that's the idea of putting one of these in yep that should be good uh how do you like uh, Adobe Premiere with the new Intel iGPU acceleration in addition to regular GPU. We haven't done too much testing on that. We were going to look into all that sort of stuff for our, our second gen Threadripper coverage. Tim did test it out though and it probably is, am I right in saying it's not useful for what we do Tim because we do a two pass? Oh, the, uh, the, are you talking about the quick Premiere stuff with the Intel quick sync, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah right. it currently it only works with one passing codes and we use two pass for the superior quality um, at the moment. So it is something to look into because I think on one pass, it does make Intel CPUs very, very competitive. But yeah, it just does, yeah. it, it only works with some sort of settings at the moment in terms of Premiere. Um, but I think the guys over at 
uh, Gamers Nexus, right? They did some testing on it. Yes. Yep. Oh, and I think my uh, camera has just died. I knew oh, I was going to okay. have to replace the battery at some point. Yeah, I should have given you that DC power pack last time we caught up. But anyway, we'll, uh, I'll give you that next time and you can solve that for uh, the next stream. But these are just our little, our little fun teething problems on the stream. I'll let Tim address that. Yep. One second. How much speed would you need for the best ex uh, game experience? 6950x at 4 gigahertz is better than the 700x at 4.8 gigahertz. Um, yeah, well, I mean, games don't really use that many cores, so even the 6950x is going to be heavily underutilized in most games, so going beyond 10 cores isn't really going to help. Uh, and that's the problem that, well, Ryzen 7 uh, owners kind of face, though. That's a, you know, it's 8 core 16 thread, and we're starting to see games better utilize those uh, 8 core CPUs. But I think we're going beyond 10 cores, we're probably getting a bit, of, a bit ahead of ourselves at the moment for gaming. How are you going there, Tim? Scott from PCK Skew is just asking us when the, uh, when the stream will be finished, so I thought I should probably respond to him. <laughs> You'll have to turn the auto gain off your uh, window setting for your mic if you can. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Um, it's all right at the moment. Hmm. Regarding Premiere and discrete GPU accelerations, Premiere worked best with AMD cards using OpenCL or NVIDIA cards with CUDA, I think, NVIDIA cards. I'm not sure if it's changed with recent updates or not. It's not something we've done a lot of testing with. We generally just use a GTX 1080 Ti because that's what we use in our test system. Uh, I don't know if Gamers Nexus or anyone else has done that kind of testing, but we certainly haven't. So I can't give you any uh, concrete information there. Can you tell the difference between one uh, versus two pass after YouTube com compression? Uh, you, you definitely can. I mean, the higher, the higher the quality video that you give to YouTube, the better result you'll get once they compress it. It doesn't compress everything to sort of like an even uh, playing field, if you will. So yeah, it can help certainly. Um, I've noticed one pass; it's a little more. If you look closely, especially at the 4K stuff, it's a little more blocky. Uh, yeah. Whereas the the yep. two pass stuff is definitely more uh, clearer. I know for a lot of the content we do, it probably doesn't matter too much, but if you can make it a bit better, why not? Yeah, pretty much. we got here what are you up to now are you putting the are you putting the rear fan in yeah putting the the halos on the rear fan okay uh new ryzen 2600x or pre-owned 5930k uh well i guess it really comes down to what the prices you're getting them for uh but if they're a similar price, I'd probably get the Ryzen CPU just because it's new hardware that comes with a warranty and it obviously has an upgrade path. So you can go to Ryzen 3 down the track or Zen 2, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so, yeah, better upgrade path there and you can just take advantage of newer technologies as well. Tim, you're buzzing, lol. Yeah, he does buzz a bit from time to time, but we'll let him off the hook. Oh, some people are saying they can hear me through your speakers. I think that was when I was close to the laptop before. Because I have to be able to hear Steve somehow, and I don't have any spy earpieces in or anything. Yeah, spy earpieces will be the upgrade for next stream. Is there a bit rate you can achieve where YouTube won't re-encode your uploaded video? Uh, no, they re-encode everything. So it doesn't. there's no yeah. like magic pass-through option. Uh, no, unfortunately, they completely they, change it. Yeah, they always change it. Uh, are we going to be reviewing the Razer Blade 15, Tim? Yes, they are sending oh, one out after Computex. Awesome, good stuff. They were going to send one out before, but I wouldn't have had time to look at it, so 
sort of let them off the hook on that one. Steve, can you do a test with background apps like antivi antivirus, uh, Steam, Uplay Origin, or similar VLC browsers, that kind of stuff? I'm, yeah, I think I will have a go at that after Computex. I'll try and find a way to make that as accurate, as reliable as possible, and I'll give that a go just because it is so heavily requested and I try to do the content that you guys want to see. Um, so, yeah, I'll definitely have a go at doing that uh and hopefully we can get it fairly accurate by having sort of a long video playing and try to simulate stuff that sort of happens over a long period of time so it's not constantly changing throughout the uh benchmark but yeah yes is the answer i will do that i have to ask you steve while while you're around so we're using this gigabyte board that has the uh integrated optane memory in it and you mm -hmm. you've figured out that it only costs 15 dollars more I believe so, yeah. What do you yep. reckon about that? What do you reckon about this whole Optane, integrate Optane thing? Mm, I knew someone was going to ask about it. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I have, I, uh, yeah, I haven't used it. I Mainly because I haven't seen the point to it. So I don't know if I'm accurate there. If I'm wrong about that, I don't know. But that's something we have to probably look into. But assuming you made, I know it's only $15 more, so for 32, well, I think it's $15 more looking at the prices on Amazon, and that seems like a you know, a great upgrade of 32 gig, it's essentially like an SSD. Yeah. I don't really know enough about it to, I, I've only done some sort of brief research and it just didn't seem like it was worth it, but maybe I'm wrong about that. I think it really does depend on what sort of system you're building. Um, yeah, if you have a... Well, yeah, if you had a hard drive, then, yeah, cool. Um, but if you're putting in, like, a 256 gig or hot, larger SSD, is there much point? Yeah, well, I think, it. yeah, like I said, I think it does depend. Like, I think if you're getting a, building a system that's a lot of hard drives, you've got maybe, like, a, like a SATA SSD or a low-capacity SSD, you can just use, uh, apparently, Gigabyte, at least with this board, has, like, just a one-click utility. You just click it, and it's immediately caching your sort of um, your games or and whatever. So I think there is at least some point to it if you were you weren't spending big on SSDs, like you weren't going to go out and buy the top end NVMe drives, then you're probably going to get you know some performance gains and that sort of thing by using Optane. But I think yeah, it does depend on the sort of system you're trying to build. There's no point going all out on SSDs and getting Optane, but at the same time if you're on you know less fast storage than it is going to make a bit of a difference, I reckon. But I yeah, exactly. It, so. No, it's definitely worth testing. Uh, and just the fact that it looks like it is only a $15 premium. So it's $195 US on, <coughs> You're choking on, a, there. Jeez. on Amazon right now. And oh. so, yeah, that seems that seems pretty good to me. And it is obviously a, a high quality Z370 board as well. So, yeah, I think that's something to look into when we get back from Computex for sure. Yeah, I mean the boards, the board looks really good. Um, you know, even though you've got Optane in there using one of the uh, slots, you've got another M.2 slot as well. So it's certainly mm -hmm. not like you know you're buying this board that's got Optane included and then suddenly you can't put in another SSD. There certainly is still room for that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, well, to buy that Optane uh, drive separately, I think it's about 60 or $80 somewhere around there. Yeah, I thought it was about yeah. that as much as well. So certainly, you know, it sounds like a pretty good deal there from Gigabyte. It's really interesting too because it's a really new board and you have to wonder sort of like how much of a market there is for sort of these Optane integrated boards. So it'll be interesting to see how, how well that does. Mm. Put the GPU in, got our Gigabyte GeForce GTX 1070 Ti, familiar for some of you who watched the AMD build in the past. We've got the Halo in there. Um, it, it's interesting how it, um, I wonder if I can get a good shot of this actually on the second cam, because there's, it just peeks out around the inside of the fan rings. Let me move you out of the way, Steve, a little bit. Get me out of here. Yeah, you don't want to be in the picture anyway, do you? <laughs> So let me see if I can rotate this enough. 
some oh, that hor- awesome. horrible sounds there. <laughs> um, but you can sort of see, like, in the top corner there, that's the halo coming out from underneath that fan there, that white ring. So I reckon that'll actually look quite good as far as RGB goes around fans. You know, the fan will be spinning and you'll see that sort of white area just there. Okay. Oh, yep. Yeah, I can just see it. Yep. Yeah, in that sort of top corner. Yeah. No, that could be pretty cool. It'll, it'll look impressive from uh, the back of the case. Yeah, he's on the main people. street. This is what I meant to show on the camera. <laughs> Over there. So hopefully you guys could could see that. And then, yeah. So interesting, interesting product at least. Uh, so let's put the graphics card in and get the power supply in and then... Well, be, you get in there. Then you've just got all the cabling to do. Yeah. That's the fun part. People are going to love watching that. That'll be the part where I... In the last AMD build, I... I um basically just shoved all the cables in the back that mm. I had like the controllers and stuff just floating in the back there. And when I was editing the video together, I was like, oh my God, this looks so bad. Like putting on, like not only what I was doing on camera looked bad, but also the finished product looked really bad. So I was just like, I'm just going to hide all of that and not show it on camera because it looked just awful. <laughs> Good choice. Well, I think for the first few system builds I did on the channel, I spent ages on the cable management in the back and got it all looking quite neat and tidy. Yeah. And then five minutes uh, after that, when it was actually being used as a test system, I had to cut away all the cable ties and it took me so long to get it back to a yeah. messy state where I could just swap things in and out quite quickly. So, yeah, cable management's not super high on the priority list of test system builds. Well, certainly for this one because, um, I mean, I'll probably get B-roll at some point, but certainly for this one for the moment, it's kind of like just Mm. let's get it finished. Yeah, get it finished and get it working. That'll be the the key here. Uh, Any news on Threadripper 2 yet? Just wondering. Second gen Threadripper. Well, Tim and I discussed this. We're both expecting it to be announced uh, or at least seen at Copytex. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it'll be properly announced, but we'll definitely be able to see the boards, I reckon, X499. Uh, I'm pretty certain we'll see uh, X499 X499 boards. Um, And then there's the, what is it, the Z490? So no idea about that obviously b450 boards they're going to be awesome we're really keen to see those expecting to see them anyway uh what part of australia from we're both from victoria so so i live in melbourne steve lives in the middle of nowhere (laughs) yeah that's that's true you got you got a nice view out from your house i get a view of a street you get (laughs) steve gets rolling hills looks really good actually yeah yeah. might have seen some of the posts on instagram i think Benchmark Zen. Uh, okay. So what are you up to now? I'm just cleaning out some of this stuff, <clears throat> cleaning out some of the screws I don't need anymore, just so that we can have a bit more space here to do the final Jack bits Lee and says pieces. Zed. It is. It's. It's Zed. It is Zed. Z- yeah, yeah, Z370. They want us to say Z. Z? Oh, come on. Our accents, it's it's hard for us. We have to think about saying Z. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard enough saying cash instead of cash. Yep. It's funny, I was looking up that whole cash cash thing. Is it only Australia that says cash and everywhere it's else says cash a... or Correct. cachet yep. or whatever? Yep, yep, that's right. Yep. <clears throat> so, yeah. So that's why I've changed to saying cash because 90% of our audience knows what I'm talking about then. So that makes sense. And people always pull you up if you say cash. Yes, exactly. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 499, how stupid are motherboard uh, names right now? Motherboard naming. Oh. Um, <laughs> mother, yeah, I suppose. Motherboard names are probably the least stupid thing, though. I mean, I know everything has gaming in it now, but, you know... But uh, obviously monitors, laptops that Tim has to deal with a lot, the naming's a lot worse there. Monitor names, I don't know how they come up with them. Just They're painful. The numbers and letters sort of thing. So here's, for you guys on the stream, here's sort of what we've been doing so far. It's really dark in there, unfortunately. Mm. 
But it's always a challenge lighting up the inside of a case. Yeah, normally I put the lights a bit closer, but to light the whole thing, um, it's a bit, bit, bit more difficult. But yeah, you can sort of see that we've got most of the stuff in so far. We've definitely got the graphics card, the motherboard, the RAM. We've got the cooler on, looking quite good. Got the Be Quiet logo up the right way as well, so that's nice. Yep, very good. It's looking very uh, stealth in there at the moment. So definitely got the intake fans here, got the outtake fans, and everything is going to be RGB. So much RGB. <laughs> I've got this enormous bundle of front cables. I think this case is, has RGB on the front as well, so just an unbelievable amount of cabling to go. Uh, yep, that'll keep you busy for a bit longer yet. I don't know how long the stream has been going for at this point, but well over an hour. Yeah, quite a while. Um, <laughs> an hour and 45 minutes at this point. Okay. Might be halfway. <laughs> <laughs> Might be halfway. Well, I'm hoping to get it finished relatively soon. But we'll soon find out, that's for sure. Are they addressable RGBs? So can you control them via software or is it just a switch? Um, they've got a control... Well, are you talking about the case or about like uh, what component? Tell us about any of the RGBs. So I think the case here has got a, uh, an, a controller on the back that has all sorts of things on it. Um, okay. It's hard to say exactly, but they've certainly got uh, a cable that goes to your PC's RGB header. Okay. Yep. Um, well. And that, that attaches good. to the LEDs found around the case. So, okay. And that also attaches to the fans as well. So there's multiple ways to sort of <clears throat> uh, hook that up. So you've got a, an, a PWM header that goes to your motherboard. Mm -hmm. You've got a power header. And you've also got a, um, an RGB header. So I think those are the main ways that you're controlling it. Um, that's right, for well, that. I'm... Excellent. And then the other stuff, the... Uh, Halo's thing as well has just an RGB cord going to it, just this one here, as well as a uh, fan header. And I think that just does um, whatever, but it, it does support things like, you know, Aura Sync, MSI Sync, it says on here. And that's similar for a lot of the RGB products, all supporting those sort of different protocols. Excellent. Well, we should be able to put together quite a coordinated light show for, for everyone at the end of the stream then. <laughs> oh yeah, hopefully. Let's get this power supply in. Where did I put my trusty knife or two dollar Bunnings box cutter? Uh, is it behind you? Yeah, I've got it. Ah, it's all good. <clears throat> <clears throat> What's the difference between uh, Aussies and Brits? Uh, Aussies are the British cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's quite funny. Straight Power 11. This is their new range from Be Quiet, and apparently they're going to have a 1,000 watt, 850, 750, 650, 550, and 450, according to the manual. Okay, that's a good range. But certainly, certainly very new, that's for sure. So what's been happening, Steve? Anything exciting? No, I'm just, uh, I'm focused on Computex at this point. I'm really keen to get over there and start checking out the new gear, so. Um, yeah, mm. definitely. But yeah, just. Nothing out of the ordinary. Just watching, uh, watching you do your live stream mostly. <laughs> Fun stuff. Yes, indeed. I've just lost the chat. I oh, found it again. All right, this we're is back. Their power supply looks quite good. It's got a bit of weight to it. That's what you always want to see, and modular as well on the back. So very, very nice. That's fully modular, is it? Yeah, fully modular. Fully modular. This is the bundle of cables that you get. I'll have to wait 20 seconds before I can see them, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. 
is it worth lowering the timings with my 3200 CLC? Uh, probably not. Like, uh, Skylake doesn't really respond that well to lowered timings. I mean, it, it, it'll certainly help. I just don't know to what degree. If you're talking about uh, improving gaming performance, it depends on your GPU. If you don't have, like, a GTX 1080 Ti, then it's probably not worth tightening your timings up. Uh, definitely anything slower than a GTX 1080, you won't see a single frame uh, extra. So... Yeah, I wouldn't worry about that too much. I actually, have a, the video on Saturday sort of covers that in a lot more depth. So keep your eyes peeled for Saturday's video. Uh, what else we got here? Are you guys going uh, joining the Japan bandwagon after Computex? I'm not aware of any Japan bandwagon after Computex, but no, we'll be rushing back because we have a huge amount of videos uh, that we have to get back into. So, yep. yeah, Co Computex is almost like a holiday for us because it's a break from normal content. But, uh, yeah, plenty of things we have to rush back to uh, Australia to start covering again. Steve, when is the Mega Unboxing coming back? Uh, unboxing boxes, I assume you're referring to. Um, yes, that sounds like that's the one you're referring to. Uh, I'm hoping to do an unboxing boxes episode probably the first week that I get back from Combitex. I do have a few products piling up at the moment. Some of them are under NDA, so yeah, but I hope to do one soon. It's just a bit, a bit busy at the moment. All right, don't need VGA2 cable. What else cables do I need? I need the 8-pin uh, power supply yeah. one. VGA3. Yeah, handy. Don't need that one. So this is the this is the fun part of the build, everyone. So this is the edge of your seat sort of stuff where Tim edge plugs of your in seat, all the cables. It? Yeah, edge of your seat or edge of your old grandma chair. Hey, I like the old grandma chairs. You've you've got to talk to Corsair and see if you can get one of their T1 race chairs. They're pretty good. I like mine. So, well, we'll get Tim a real chair soon. I'm sure they'll hook us up, right? Surely. I think so. Yeah. I'll shoot him off an email now. Going with the fan mount towards the bottom, because you can get a lot of uh, nice amount of clearance at the bottom there for the power supply. Yeah, well, with that basement section, it looks like there wouldn't be much uh, if you weren't sucking cool air from outside of the uh Yeah, it's case. very tight clearance. Yeah, so you'd sort of have to do that, wouldn't you? Yep. That's all right. The power supply will self-cool itself, I suppose. Yep, self-cool uh, itself. What do you think about next Intel desktop CPU release? Will they add more cores and threads? Well, the next CPU to come out of Intel, we believe, will be their 8-core uh, Coffee Lake CPU. And rumors suggest that the base clocks and whatnot are going to be quite low on that one. So that'll be interesting to see how that one goes. But as for the next generation, well, uh, sounds like they're struggling on that one, doesn't it, Tim? With a 10 nanometer, yeah, lots of yeah. problems with 10 nanometer, it sounds like. It sounds like the whole node is broken fundamentally. Yes, so hard to say what, when and what to expect there because the mobile parts that are releasing initially uh, till yields improve don't look too impressive. So Now they can't yeah, get the quite... GPU to work. No, it's a bit bit troubling. I'm I'm really hoping uh, there's that they can get that all sorted out because we obviously want to continue to see really good competition because the last thing we want to see is then AMD start to dominate and then don't expect AMD to keep pr prices low of their of ah, sorry don't expect AMD to keep pricing for their high core count CPUs too low if they're dominating Intel. Yeah, that's um, right. But I think we're a long way from that happening just yet. We'll, we'll see how it unfolds. Is Russia making their own CPU? Uh, uh, but, yeah, not too up to speed on that one. Russia's making CPU their own CPU? The uh, well, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> First I'm hearing of it if they are. Uh, modular CPUs, yes. Well, in I mean... Depends how you define modular CPU, but in a way, yeah, Ryzen is a modular CPU design. And so if you mean in that sense, then yeah, that's definitely the future. And I'd say for GPUs as well. 
So, and AMD's obviously put themselves in a really good position to take advantage of that. So Intel is definitely going to have to do something similar. And that's when you'll really see the playing field level. Yeah, Intel projects that their uh, first iteration of 10 nanometer will be slower than the current 14 nanometer. So Intel's come out and said that's that will be the case. So we're not going to be seeing any increase in performance with the next generation. Uh, possibly a decrease, but I'd say they're trying to wait. And that's why we're seeing these low end mobile parts come out first. They'll wait till they can get it to a point where they can at least match the performance that we're seeing now. Uh, they'll just look yep. to improve efficiency. Uh, I've, yes. I've found a flaw with this case just at the moment, that there is no way to route the uh, CPU power cord just behind the motherboard so that it comes out in the top corner. Oh, you really? Know, yeah, there doesn't seem to be like a little outlet hole or anything for that, and it won't. the, the cord won't actually fit through the... Sometimes they're a bit of a tight squeeze, you've got to wriggle them through, but... Yeah, they've got. it's got a really... Uh, actually, I might be able to put it in... Yeah, I'll put it in sideways. Now it's now it's gone through. Yeah, and sometimes you have to separate the uh, put make yeah. sort of two four pins. Yep. A lot of cases are like that. It's it's a uh, it's really a real tight struggle. Fit there. Yep. All right. What else do I need? I need. <laughs> when you start talking for the first time in a while, Tim, you've got to start whispering initially because <laughs> your gain goes right up when you don't talk. Oh, does it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah, so just whisper to it. Do some, a, um, what is it, uh, ASMR initially. Make some, and then we'll do some rustling of the, rustling of packets and stuff for some ASMR. Yeah. <laughs> do a three hour live stream of that. People will love it. I'm thinking, wouldn't it be fun to make an ASMR PC video? <laughs> Not sure, I don't know. I don't know about that one. Just opening packets. So what are you doing the SATA cables at the moment? I'm just getting all the fan cables on the back here. Just plug that into the fan header that we've got. We are edging nearer. ASMR unboxing. That would actually be pretty funny. I'd totally be up for some ASMR unboxing. Maybe we can do a silly one on the uh, the Patreon channel. Yeah, that'd be funny, I reckon. Bit of fun. You've always got to have a, some videos, some fun videos like that to break up all the rest of the stuff. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, all right, going to wrap all the rest open. of the cables through to the front. That's what I'm currently doing at the moment, just in case anyone is wondering. <laughs> 2600K versus 2600X video. Man, I've been asked to do that a lot. Um, but yeah, that could be a throwback Thursday. I imagine the 2600 would still stand up quite well. It's still a bit of a beast, especially since today's games don't often call for much more than a quad core. Especially if they got... Uh, SMT technology. All right. So there is some 3.5 mil hard drive bays on the back here, but not going to be using those. No. Have you got? You've got a two two and a half inch SSD, don't you? I do. It's one of the last nice. things to put in. We've got the T Force SSD. It's actually an RGB SSD. But there's, I don't believe there's any SSD mounting on the front here. Can you put it on top of the shroud? On I could the, just chuck uh, it here. The PSU shroud. Usually you can mount them on top of the PSU shroud or something Yeah, like I don't that. think... I mean, there's some... There's like some plastic things you can remove here, but they're, they appear to be more for airflow. Okay. Well, you could... You could uh, use some adhesive tape to stick it next to the motherboard tray or down I the bottom there. I could just put there. it on the bottom here as a... Uh... Yeah, let's do that. Why not? Cool. <laughs> RGB SSD. They certainly are thinking of a lot of different things these days. Uh, yeah, everything's got to have RGB on it or it's not worth selling, apparently. 
Yeah, people are complaining about the gain on your mic. Is it the Windows, uh, the setting for your recording device in the Windows? I don't know. I'm fairly sure there, there wasn't any gain on it to begin with. But obviously have you, that's Have you turned problem. software control off and stuff like that, though? Um, I thought I did. I thought I did. Okay. So let me have a look here. I'm not even sure you can set it in OBS to have that feature. No, but Windows, well, yeah, I don't know. Windows does weird things sometimes, though. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Might also be just from looking down as well, because as yep. I look into the microphone, for example. Mm -hmm. So this is the... <laughs> This is the RGB SSD, and they've got this massive RGB zone at the front here, and it comes with a USB cable as well. This is for the RGB cable, um, oh. as, <laughs> as well as the regular stuff. So this is just your standard, you know, four-pin RGB header, and you've got a there's a three-pin connector as well for some reason. Interesting. Yeah, well, that's so you can control the RGB um, that cable. Get out this uh, SATA cable as well, or SATA, depending on where you live. <laughs> SATA, SATA, it's the same thing. Flat to flat, I reckon. Um, just can you minimize my window for a moment? I've just got to go get a delivery. Yeah, sure. Cool, I'll be back in a minute. All right, Steve's having fun, obviously, at the moment with this sort of stuff. Ah, so what else is going on at the moment, guys, in the chat? Certainly has been some interesting fun doing a live stream for the first time. Pass the SSD, the SATA cable through for the SSD as well. Oh, it's looking a bit messy at the back here, but you know, what can you do, I guess? You getting there, are you? Certainly getting there, certainly getting there. Let's put you back on the screen as well. There you go. How's your parcel? Anything interesting? Uh... Can't say, can you? I'm not sure. I'm just checking now. I don't think it's a release product yet. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, I think it's under NDA. So. All right. Well, can't talk about that then. Except you can kind of see what it is on the stream. Ugh. Not sure that helped much anyway. doesn't matter. <laughs> it's in the box, so whatever. All right, what questions have I missed here? Doing some riveting cable management around the back here. <sighs> All right, I'm going to put this down. Make sure everything's uh, uh, far fixed into place before you lay it down. Sorry? Make sure everything's fixed into place before you lay it down. You don't want the power supply falling out the back or something. Oh, no, I definitely did screw everything in. The only thing that's floating around is the SSD at the moment. Okay. Let's plug in some front headers and so forth. <laughs> Fix the SSD yep. later. Now it's just a matter of trying to find where all this stuff is. Which CPU fits perfectly to a 1070 Ti? 
Uh, you want at least something like the Core i5 8400 or the Ryzen 5 2600. Either of them would be suitable choices for a 1070 Ti. Um, yeah, either of them would be fine. Actually, I am very hungry. That was the problem with having this uh, stream delayed a bit. Neither of us have had lunch yet. No, I haven't had lunch. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, what can you do? Not a lot. Front USB C. Does this case have front USB C? Oh, it does. Oh, that's neat. And I assume the motherboard has a header for it? It does indeed. It has USB 3.1 Gen 2 USB C nice. on the back, and I think you can get. Yeah, at least USB 3.1 Gen 1 on the front. Awesome. That's for the SSD. What else have we got around here that we need to put in? Uh, I don't know. Sounds like you've just about got everything done. I should put in the motherboard power cable. How about that? Do the easy uh, yeah. one. Yep. Slam that in. I don't think it's so much when Tim lowers his head. I think it's just when he doesn't talk for a while and then he, he starts to talk. I think the game just... It's it's definitely on automatic. It's definitely winding up when yeah. you're not talking. I'll have to go um, see what's the situation with that next time we do one of these streams. Make sure that we're not going to get owned by the audio. Yeah. We'll, we'll work it out, guys. We'll work it out. But, yeah, as a, as a warning, probably crank those headphones down a little bit. Um... Question: Why are graphics card, why why are graphics card prices high? Um, Strong Game Ninja is asking. <coughs> sorry, uh, they're high because of well, lots of reasons: memory uh, shortages slash memory prices as a result. Uh, then cryptocurrency mining, so demand on the actual graphics cards themselves. But they're coming back down. But it's it's not really an ideal situation. But it has improved since the start of the year. Yep. Um, basically, demand is the reason why prices are high, and you can blame that on limited supply. I suppose they haven't been out. Of, they haven't been able to ramp up supply because of the memory shortage. And graphics cards need memory. Oh, I've had a bit of a cold uh, recently, which I got from my kids, and uh, my throat's a bit sore. But anyway, we will persevere. Hopefully, it's not too bad. Uh, they pretty much stick to them. They, they keep to themselves, the spiders. How do you find the spiders at your area, Tim? Mm, don't really get too many out in the in the city areas, which is good. Yep. Um, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of deadly spiders and so forth. Mm. <laughs> so yep. it's just a matter of avoiding those. Yep, definitely. 12 volt RGB, let's get that in. Yeah, we have a few red backs and things out my way, but I've never ever been bitten by one thankfully hopefully i never do if you are if you don't see videos for a while one of the redbacks got me yep so oh well another one down what else have we got here this channel needs a live stream once every week yeah that'd be pretty good fun we could probably do one every fortnight at this stage but yeah we'll see We'll see, we'll see. I think the uh, if the PC build that Tim is doing right now, if you guys have enjoyed this stream, we could definitely start doing this as a monthly uh, occurrence. What do you think, Tim? Yeah, I think that would be fun. A lot of fun. I would definitely drive to your place, though, next time. I would have driven today. It's just the whole Computex thing and getting ready for that. We just have a lot of work on our plate before yeah. we can fly out. Uh, but, yeah, it would have been a lot of fun to uh, turn up. And then... Maybe we can order some pizza, and that's when we do the Q&A, when we're actually having some lunch. Yep. <laughs> no one has died from a spider bite in Australia in, like, decades. Well, that is good to know. I wonder... I know there are fatalities for snakes, or at least I think there are uh, quite a few. Yeah, snakes, snakes are certainly more deadly out this way than the spiders yep. are. Yep. Yeah, and you're just more likely to get bitten by one if you uh, happen to stand on one. Yep. If you happen to stand on a spider, it usually doesn't go so well for the spider. Yeah. 
and standing on snakes. Avoid <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, about spiders because of the big one on the wall. Thankfully, I'm not at all scared of spiders, so that one won't even get me to turn around. But uh, anyway, need the audio issues solved before more, more live streams, definitely. So that's yep. uh, one we'll do with you, Nick, with the, uh, the patrons. But... All a bit of a work in progress, you know, just to make sure that yeah. These things do okay? Yeah, well, we've probably got to invest in a dedicated streaming setup as well. I mean, we've got a few of the parts. Yeah. Uh, probably a dedicated streaming PC in your studio would work well. That's another build video we can do. <laughs> yes, exactly. Endless build videos. This cable management's not going to look good, just warning everyone. It's all right. It's a live stream. Uh, if you to do it, it, cable management is the most time-consuming part of any build by far. For you to do that cable management properly, it's over an hour. It's at least an hour of just routing cables, doing them over again, and yeah. Anyway, it's the least fun part of any build. Yep. Okay, what else do I need to put in? Oh, I got this RGB thing over here. So what have we got here? How does this hook up? You tell me. Yeah, I think it needs an, an adapter. Let's take a look in the box. Are you going to live benchmark this PC? Um, I mean, I suppose Tim could. We talked about this the other day, and live benchmarking is significantly more boring than it sounds, but... I don't know, maybe that's something that you guys do want to see and will enjoy and we can do. Uh, but yeah, we can look into that. I don't know, I think there'd still be some interest for some live benchmarking, even if you say it might be a bit boring. Yeah, well, we can definitely give it a go. You know, it doesn't hurt to try, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, Tim, Steve, how many years has it been since your very first moment with PC gaming and what was it? Uh, for me, it was a very long time ago, unfortunately, and I don't remember the first, the first PC game I played seriously was definitely the DOS version of Command and Conquer. Loved that. But I think I'd played the SimCity games before that and probably a few other older games, but Command and Conquer was when I really got into PC gaming. What about you, Tim? Um, what was the question? First PC game? Uh, yeah, and when? How long ago did you get into PC gaming? Oh, ages ago. I think probably around the time I built my first PC, which would have been, ooh, a long time ago, at least ten years ago now. So that was kind of mm -hmm. like original Assassin's Creed sort of era in terms okay. of that sort of games. But yeah, you know, before that, I think Star Wars <clears throat> Battlefront, the two, the first Star Wars Battlefront two that came out in like two thousand five, was probably the one that really got me into it. I think. Okay, what PC was that that you built? Do you remember? The first one? Mm. Oh, it had like an HD, like an AMD Radeon HD 4850 or something from back back then. It had like a okay. yep. Core 2 Duo sort of processor. Um, very entry-level sort of system. I didn't have like a huge budget to build it. So certainly back then, that was sort of like what I was getting. Yep. No, that's, well, that's why I sort of still like doing those kind of uh, videos and content because that's what a lot of our viewers yeah. are doing. They're not necessarily all buying the most high-end gear. So it's fun playing with, around with the lower end stuff. Yeah, for sure. I had a lot of, yeah, I had a lot of, that's one of the reasons why I had so much fun with the AMD APUs. That was really cool. Um, that's because, yeah, Cliff asked that, what, oh, he asked me what my first PC build was. I've answered that a few times on our monthly Q and A's, but basically it was a Celeron 300A overclocked to about 450, somewhere between 450 and 500 megahertz. Don't remember how much RAM it had. It would have been a very small amount. It had a 16 megabyte uh, Voodoo Banshee graphics card from Creative Labs of all places. Uh, and that was on uh, an AOpen motherboard, I think it was. Open or a bit, I can't remember. I worked it all out a while ago from some old old photos I had. But anyway, that was um, I played Command and Conquer on that computer and loved it. And 
that was an AGP graphics card. So the first generation of AGP graphics cards. Oh, really? Yeah. So that was kind of cool. Uh, from um, PCIe. So not PCI Express. PCI. All right, I found the header where this thing goes. I still need the adapter for that. It's fun trying to find where all the RGB headers are on things these days. <laughs> WMD Tech uh, asks, just want to ask a question. I want to overclock my RAM to 2933. Do I need to upgrade my BIOS to the latest Raven, uh, Raven Ridge? So it's obviously an APU. Uh, well, you don't necessarily need to update your BIOS to overclock your memory. Uh, it just depends on the kind of memory you have and how high it will go and how good the memory controller in your Raven Ridge chip is. But updating your BIOS is always a good thing to do when you're sort of doing something like that for the first time. Just make sure nothing's overclocked when you do update the BIOS. Maybe even load the safe defaults and then do the update. Um, but yeah, depends on a few things that you've got there as to how far you can go. How's it all going, Tim? It's looking like you're getting there. Yep. Just making sure that everything is looking good. Deep Cover just uh, gave us $5. Thank you very much for that. Much appreciated. Uh, hello, what is the best AO cooler I can get for my 8700? I have the Corsair H110i, and I got temps from 38C to 40C on idle. Uh, can I get better temps? Um, well, it depends what your load temps are, but I think I said 8700K, but here at 8700. If it is just an 8700, then the cooler you have is more than sufficient. Um, not a problem at all there. Um, but yeah, let us know if it's the 8700 or the 8700K, but if it's 8700, then your Corsa H110i will be perfectly fine. Why is the Intel Core i5-8600 processor at 100% in Battlefield 1? Hmm. I wouldn't have expected it to hit 100%, but it's possible. As long as you're not seeing any mad stuttering or whatever, then that's fine. 100% uh, load is necessarily bad. Um, so, yeah. Which mic's humming? Is it mine or is it Tim's? Or which one's loud? Which one has the bad gain? Is it me or Tim? A few guys are complaining about the audio. Yeah, I'm not seeing too much hum on at least the... Uh... It's just when the gain winds up on your mic. It's definitely on auto. So if we can... We 100% we want to fix that for next time. Yep. Yeah, they're saying it's Tim's. I hear it wind up like, um, it, yeah, you get some serious uh, feedback. But anyway, we will fix this for next time, guys, promise. We'll do even more testing, even though that didn't actually work for this time. Yeah. I wonder, since you're mostly standing over the, the table there, you possibly should have just used the NT mic. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Um, How hard is that to plug in and just swap over the mics? Oh yeah, I could plug it in. Um, I'd, I'd try that because if, uh, if it's wrecking the quality of the stream, it'd only take you a second to change it. All right, let me go get it. All right, we'll see how this goes. We'll, we'll um, Basically what we're going to do is we're going to use Tim's mic that is his studio grade mic that's directly over him. So... When he plugs that in, hopefully it'll sound better. So he's just doing that now. So now you've just got me. So that sucks. <laughs> I 
I'm not actually listening to the stream. I can just hear Tim on Skype and it was quite bad. So I imagine on the stream it sounds pretty nasty. Um, but yeah, again, sorry about that. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Yep. Yeah, All it sounds good. miles better. Yeah, way better. Way better? Way better. It is a better bike. Yeah, well, it's also not attached to your body, which is helpful. Yeah, I think it might pick you up through the feedback a little bit more than the other mic was going to, though. It should be more directional. Um, oh, it dep yeah, it depends. I think it does pick up most of this stuff, though. And it's also in the stream now. <laughs> Fun stuff. Yeah, um, that's not ideal, but whatever. It's better than feedback. Um, I'm just listening to the stream yeah. now. All right, um, let me just take out this mic. Put that over here. Anyway, we'll see what are, what are uh, what's everyone saying about how's the new mic, guys? Have we improved things or made them worse? I'm trying to think what else I need to plug in at the moment. I think it's only these RGB headers that I'm trying to find the RGB header for. Also got an RGB controller actually somewhere. Um, ZZR Hardy just gave us five dollars. Thanks, mate. Uh, roughly, what CPU utilization level does GPU performance start taking a hit? Uh, well, basically anything under your ninety nine hundred percent. As soon as you start dropping down GPU utilization, you will straight away see a reduction in frame rate. Uh, the percentage obviously depends on what the current frame rate is, but uh, for maximum performance, you definitely want to keep the utilization as high as possible. So avoid those CPU or other system bottlenecks. Okay, everyone's saying the audio is much better, much improved, so... Cool. Yeah. That's good. That's good. That is very good. We should have done that a while ago. How did you guys come up with the idea for the Harbour and Box channel? Um, I've explained that a few times on the Q&A, just really briefly. Uh, some of you may remember the original host, Matt. Um, Matt is a good friend of mine. He wanted to do the channel, I didn't, <laughs> so uh, he sort of convinced me to help him start it, so I did, and then I actually really enjoyed it, so I started helping him a lot with it, and we started doing it together, and then after about a year and a half, uh, Matt sort of started to realise that it was just a huge amount of work, and yeah, a few things changed in his life, and he decided that he didn't want to continue with it, so I decided to take over, and then Tim joined me last year. That's where I put it. It's definitely doing auto gain, Tim. So we're going to have to work out what is creating the auto gain, whether it's your preamp or whether it's the software. It's still doing it? Apparently, yeah. Damn. Yeah, it's annoying. So we're going to have to work out what is changing Tim's gain. Yeah, I don't know. Don't know what is going on there. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh well. Yeah, I think it must be on the computer side for sure. Yeah. Oh well. Not much we can do about it right now, but we'll sort it out for next time. Yeah. Um. Just trying to figure out where do you the, these RGB headers they plug straight into the motherboard, right? They're generally at the very bottom of the boards, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've found them, but they seem to not be going in too well. Uh, they may only go they they will only go one way to work, so make sure that there's probably a little arrow or something on the connector that you have to line up. Yeah, I'm just trying. There's a five pin one, like twelve, the twelve G R B W ones. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and I've got four pin connectors and it just seems uh, like that's not fitting too well. Yeah, you'll want a five pin for it to use the, the gigabyte lighting feature, I would have thought. Yeah, so I've got the, the uh, SSD is four pin and this one uses a different connector. The Halo uses a different connector that I've found, so that's fine. Just need to plug that in. And then there's this other one for the controller, which is so, gone somewhere that's also a four pin, yeah, just... 12 GRB. That's it. And I can find two five pin ones on this board, but I haven't as yet been able to find a four pin uh, RGB header. Okay. In your um, 
when you get a second in your Skype settings, did you have automatically adjust microphone settings enabled or not? For your mic? Well, you're still talking to you're you're talking to me through Skype as well, though. Like, were we having these game problems when Skype wasn't part of the stream? Um, I don't remember. Yeah, I, I don't think so. So I'm wondering if it's Skype that's messing it up. But yeah, this could be for a different board, considering these are for Aura and for Asus and MSI um, RGB controllers. So mm -hmm. maybe I'll just leave those unplugged. Sometimes there are uh, in the packet that you get with it, like accessories, there's like an adapter cable that can suit different motherboards. But quickly jump into your Skype audio settings and then just make sure that automatically adjust microphone settings is unticked. Yeah, okay, let me just get rid of your screen so that I'm not, don't accidentally show your address or anything. <laughs> no one can be bothered driving out here. No one has the fuel for that. Boy, don't you just love Skype? Love it. So where would I find this setting? Does it exist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to options, tools, options. Uh, I am using to... the Skype Windows Store app. Oh. Yeah, that's probably your first mistake. Hey, it's been fine for everything else. <laughs> Except for when we want to do a live stream on the channel. Yeah, that's right. Then again, the audio does seem to be coming from my audio capture device rather than yours. Hmm. Yeah, well, it's something we'll have to fix for next time. All right, I think yeah. that this is all all good. These these RGB things are for a different motherboard, which is fine. Um, I think the... Yeah, this, this SSD should be okay, but the rest of the stuff, not. So let me just find the appropriate cable for that one. Your condenser mic picks up a lot more surrounding audio than the uh, lapel did. Yeah, that's but true. It's better anyway than what we were uh, yeah. using, I think. Okay. But anyway. Let me just see about this. Yep. Yeah. All good, all good. I'm just checking out that the manual for that board. Talk yeah. quietly when you do next, your game just wound back up again. Did it? Yeah. Yeah, I see the problem. I, you know, what is making that problem? Let me have a look in the sound settings. All right, let's have a look at this manual here. Yeah, as far as I can tell, it only has the two headers at the bottom of the board. Yeah. So, not sure about that one. Interesting. Okay, well, I've still got one header to put in. I found, I found one, just got to put this one... think yeah this is definitely the right it's definitely the right one it's just really difficult to get it in don't know why that's the case though 
well, you don't have to worry about the lighting too much, just get the system up and running. I'll give it one last shot, and if that doesn't work, then I'll give up. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's just RGB lighting, you can sort that out later. Alright, I think everything's plugged in then. Except for those RGB headers, but that's okay. You've got the 24 pin power connector in now, power cable. I put the motherboard power cable in. Well done. That'll come in handy later. Alright, let's make sure it's all... All looks good. Let's uh, find a power cable and plug it in. I guess I should probably plug it into a display as well. Uh, yeah, if you have one handy, that will definitely be I'll useful to see if it posts. Michael says RGB is overrated, Tim. I yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, this power cable is not long enough. <laughs> yeah, you're meant to have a four pin uh, power board there ready. Yeah, now I've got it. All right. <laughs> Well, I turn it on. I mean, I haven't okay. actually plugged it in a display, so I can't actually see if it's posting or not, but... Oh, GB in there looks not too bad. This oh, SSD is crazy. Look at that. <laughs> that is just ridiculous. Oh, it looks okay in there. Oh, yeah, the, um, the SSD is very well lit up. Yeah. So you've got the board lit up, we've got the RAM lit up. It's just that aura thing here that wasn't quite lit up at the time, but apart from that, we've also got the lighting on the front that seems to be working. So certainly. Got a very orange system on your hands. That is right, that is right. Um, I will have to check though to see whether it's actually posting, otherwise we've got a problem. So let me just find, which I'm gonna unplug your stream Steve, and uh, let's take a look. So we're working. Let me just see. So Steve has died on us at the moment. I think his Skype still his Skype call is still going through. Am I still here? I think you're still there. Oh, that's that's something. Okay, let me uh, give this a good old. Okay, let's go through the boot here on this. <laughs> Your cable management is better than MBN's. That's quite funny. Oh, it's uh, pretty bad. Yeah, it's it's booting. It's, I, I've got the screen off camera, but it's definitely okay. on the Aorus board at the moment down here. So we're all good. Okay, cool. Good stuff. So I think that probably is going to conclude this stream, I reckon. Yeah, well... We kind of probably into keep Windows. going and someone obviously we... had used I think the guys at PC Case Gear were using that SSD for something before this. Ah, oh, it's got Windows on it, does it? Yeah, it does. It, it's booted straight into Windows. Free score. Um Yeah, well I mean we'd probably keep doing questions and mess around for a bit more, but if the audio is really bad, there's probably no point. We'll go away and solve that for next time. Yeah, we'll see what's going on there. I'm really not sure what the cause of that is. I've looked in the Windows settings, I've looked on the the audio recording device and everything, it just seems that there's something a bit screwed up with it. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's probably happened, we haven't streamed since the Windows update, so yeah, there's probably a setting in the, the new mixer or something that's causing us some issues, or it's just Skype, because I think the stream was fine before you called me, so I think it's probably Skype messing it up. Yeah, yeah, so definitely the cable management could do with a bit of, uh, bit of an improvement there. <laughs> 
on that front. But look, this case, I quite like the lighting on the on the case at the front um, with the sort of light streak, streaks on either side. Um, yeah, it looks good. Which you can sort of see there. So you get those on both sides. Looks good. It's a good case. It's got some nice sort of cable management features on the back that you can sort of route cables into and keep them held in there. So that's been good. All the fans seem good. We just need to solve why those that uh, Fantex Halos thing wasn't there. Now, I do also have this RGB set of RGB strips that I'll also try and chuck in there and figure out if that can be um, connected somewhere. I'm sure it can be. But yeah, it seems to be working well and looking cool, well. very, very nice. You've now got yourself a Ryzen and a Coffee Lake test system. <laughs> that is that is true. That is very, very true. So, yeah, if there's any other questions in the chat, we'll take a few more questions for a little bit and then say goodbye to this very, very long stream. That's been... <laughs> how long are we up to now? Two hours and uh, a half. Okay, yep, quite a while. Two hours and a half. Oh, sitting down for the first time a couple of hours. <laughs> well i answered a lot of questions as we were doing it yeah um yeah so scooter says is it a 5 volt or 12 volt rgb header the ssd has a 5 volt header on it so the motherboard also has a 5 volt header that i plugged it into on that um this be quiet thing up here has a um i think it has a 5 volt header on it as well but i plugged in a four volt adapter to it. So I'll probably just have to, or four pin adapter, sorry, to it. So I'll just have to go and um, swap that out and plug it back in properly. And then the light controller, I think has a five volt, the light controller for the case has a five, four pin, four pin on it, four pin, that's the one mm -hmm. on it, potentially with an adapter somewhere um, that I haven't, it's in this whole bunch of stuff probably somewhere. Uh, but it, is, it should be possible to get all the RGB working, I think. Um, just not right now. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Oh, good effort. So, yeah. Interesting I'm stuff. To, yeah, I'm trying to preserve my voice anyway, so it's probably good that we're getting to the end here. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Um got to keep it ready for computex still that's it so a few days to recover yet and then we'll be right yep yeah that's true but uh yeah well i think we can probably end that one there unless anyone's got a few last minute questions yep but like i said i did answer quite a few uh during the stream and thanks to all those guys that did make donations much appreciated that'll go towards buying some better streaming gear for next time yeah yeah definitely definitely big big shout out to all the people that were watching this from especially those of you that watch it from start to finish for some bizarre reason um <laughs> so it was a bit of fun and yeah thanks to gigabyte for helping us out with this particular build providing us with that uh, motherboard that has optane with it definitely check that out especially because it's only 15 dollars premium on the regular board as it turned out and mm. help you speed up yeah. your speed up everything and um seems like a good quality board and intel for providing the 8700k and PC case gear for providing the rest of this stuff. Thanks to guys like Be Quiet and Fantex and Team uh, Team Force, whatever it's called, T Force. Team Group. Come team on. Group. Team Group. Team Group T Force, I think, is the brand. That's correct. So that's that's right. Um, cool. Well, thanks for joining me, Steve, as well, and spending the last hour of your life on this. <laughs> uh, it was good fun enjoyed it so i'm looking forward to doing it again next time hopefully i'll be able to do it in person with you so that should probably help with the audio yep it should be all right well all right. thanks everyone and we'll uh see you in the next hardware unbox video